Hello and welcome back to XP Waste, where my wife said that neck reels look like naked people, and I can't unsee it. My name's Michael. And I'm now a little uncomfortable. Um, hi, I'm Oxy. If you're new around here, we're a podcast that talks almost entirely about old school RuneScape. Except that's a lie, because we talk about all sorts of stuff, not intentionally. We're, we're a tangential group of folks. RuneScape is always the main focus that often ends up forming branches of new, totally mm. unrelated conversations. Like, like that. you know other games and real life stuff and like you know man things like football and monster trucks and like pants and stuff like that um you know just guys being dudes am i right um if you're not new around here i finally got back to the main game after like a month um and a month is a perfect period of time to not play runescape let me tell you how have you been, Michael? I've been pretty decent. I don't want to get too into league stuff because I know that this what that's what this episode is all about. But I am also back in the main game, spoiler alert. And it I've I've really been having to like train myself. I want to say train my brain, but like I've really been having to think really hard to not play RuneScape. Somebody Somebody in the CC asked me the other day, like, are you mining? I was like, yeah, because I'm addicted to the game. I was and, there uh, for that. Yeah, he was. Um, this was like the day after I, I finished playing Leagues, and I was already back in the main game just mining stars, which is really just because I like, you know, I like playing RuneScape while I, while I work. It helps me to focus. Um, oddly enough... <laughs> So I was mining stars pretty much the entire day. I got like 180k XP or something, which is, I think that's like six hours of, of mining stars pretty consistently. Yep. Sounds about right. Yeah. So I got like 5,000 dust in one day, which is, which is pretty good. It'd take like three days to get the full set. But I, I've been good. I've been good. I, I figured out a way that I can play my Steam library on my tv wirelessly it's probably very common knowledge but there's an app on the apple tv called steam link and as long as my computer is turned on and it's on the same network as my apple tv i can wirelessly play my games on my tv with a controller and so the other night i played boulder's gate with a ps4 controller while i was just chilling on the couch and it was it was quite relaxing I liked it a lot. Um, I played from like 8 p.m. to about midnight. Um, the controls are way different, obviously, playing with a controller. Yeah, there's like fucking wheels you have to open up, I'm pretty sure, yeah. right? Like all the yeah. actions. Because on PC, it's all like right below you in that hot bar you can click on. Yeah. But yeah. It's, it's interesting. Um, is there a way to sprint in Boulder's Gate or is it just the same walking speed the entire time? No, I couldn't remember if there was a way to like hold shift and sprint or something. No, Maybe there's I'm no thinking sprint. Of like, I mean, you can. I'm thinking of Minecraft. You can, probably you can fly if you get oh. the illithid powers. But oh, I just got Gale. Just actually learned how to cast fly on me, so it's pretty cool. Anyway, I I the only problem that I have currently with the controller is I'm playing with a PS4 controller. And all of the buttons are labeled for an Xbox controller. So when it says press X and it I press, press X, square. it means, yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. So my brain is, I'm going to have to go buy a, like a Bluetooth enabled Xbox controller if I'm going to keep doing this because I liked doing it. You know, I was able to hang out with my wife and she was like crocheting and. And I was just playing it's, it's bagels uh, right there. Truly bagels. Yeah. The other the other option is I put a chair in my office, like right like right next to me or whatever, or in the corner. And she can have her her crochet corner or like her her book corner. And then I have my PC set up here. That's the other option. But I don't know, like being able to like chill on the couch 
living room seems like a much better shout for that. Because like, yeah, in a living room, if you're crocheting, you're not really using the TV. The TV is your like second monitor content more or less because you're focusing on the crocheting. But yeah. like, if if it's just like, hey, I'm gonna sit at my desk and play video games, and you're gonna like sit in the corner like back there and work <laughs> on your crochet stuff, like it is, it's probably more comfortable in every sense of the word to just put it in the yeah. living room. Plus, like, eventually the kid can sit out there too. Like, three yeah. seems like a crowd in an office, but not in a living room. So, I'm excited. I'm excited that I found that because I was like, it was on TikTok actually that I found that I could use the Steam Connect app on my Apple TV and playing other games could work also, not just Baldur's Gate. I mean, I want to like ultimately, if I don't end up going the controller route, I want to see if I can pull a Bluetooth keyboard and mouse out there. And if it would reach, then I could still play with a keyboard and mouse and just have like, a lap desk or something and play Baldur's Gate that way. Cause I much prefer keyboard and mouse, like using WASDA and like being able to point and click. Cause it's like gameplay is very slow with a controller. Um, it's just, it's not my favorite. It, it almost makes sense why the Spider Man nerds thought Baldur's Gate would be bad because it really does not, from the videos I've seen, it does not look as seamless on console. Mm -hmm. as it does on PC. Because even yeah. like simple stuff that like has keybind shortcuts is yeah. wheel in a wheel in a wheel to get to. Like that's it seems like there's a, a cool feature. There's a cool feature where you can press and hold on the X or on the PS4 it's X or O, I think. But it would be B on the controller on Xbox. If you press and hold B, it does like a thing where it searches the entire area. Or yeah. like it does a it does a, a manual or like an automatic search, and then it highlights everything around you. I don't know if that's a thing on the, hold the, on alt the PC. Key. Oh, is it press and hold all? Hold okay. the alt key. It will pop up every like you're talking like items that you can pick up and interact with, right? Yes. Yeah. Hold the alt key. It won't just highlight them. It'll actually show you a the, list of the, everything. The name. I don't know about a list, yeah. but like I oh, think no, why yeah. so why it probably doesn't show you why it probably shows you in a list is so you can scroll down through that list. On PC, it'll highlight the name over the item because you can freely move your mouse Just to pick up the items. It. Yeah. So it's probably the same functionality in a different package because yeah. of the limitations of controller. Yeah. Well, I'm excited to play more Baldur's Gate and I'm going to I I've I've I put my mind to it that I'm not going to rush the game, but I am going to finish it sooner than I probably would if I was like going through every single side quest and little thing, you know, small tasks you have to do. I just want to finish it and then I can go through a second playthrough, potentially with Oxy or whoever wants to do a duo campaign and do some of the more side questy stuff in that and take it more slow. Because I, I feel like I just want to finish it to get the story and then go back and play again. Mm -hmm. And they're like, cause it's a very repeatable game from what I've heard. And so I could play it a lot. Um, in a lot of different ways with a lot of different characters, do an evil playthrough, do like a, a no killing playthrough, lots of different things. So I, it's been my week. I saw someone on TikTok. I, they, in the video, they get all the way to the Elder Brain without killing anybody, but I haven't gotten to the Elder Brain, so I sw swiped away from the video to avoid any spoilers. I have nice. done literally everything in Act 3 except fight the Elder Brain. I had... At the end of the game? Uh, Maybe. I don't... I physically don't know. Oh, okay. I have not gotten that far to know. I've, I've avoided spoilers like the plague. I am so glad I avoided... Not really a spoiler, but a song. Um, I had my final interactions with a character, and mm. this character has a unique music track that plays when you fight them. And you know I'm a hoe for a good music track. This song, lit it was the most unique thing I've ever seen in my entire life. Never nice. before have I fought an enemy 
and that enemy is singing the song they are kicking my ass to. It was, oh, cool. oh my God. I can't even say the name of it because it will spoil what I'm talking about. But if you've played Baldur's Gate 3, then you know what song I'm talking about. All mortal lives expire. And holy shit. Nice. It was good. I'm I'm very excited to like, I almost like don't want to finish it because like I don't, I, I've been having so much fun, but like I, there's nothing else to do. Every, all my mm. allies are gathered or dead and it's time for me to go. So yeah, yeah, I feel that. I feel like the Baldur's Gate itch pretty pretty heavily. Yeah, I um, I'm still in Act One, by the way. Like I am in the Underdark. Not no, I'm not even. I, maybe I'm in the Underdark. Dog. You know how you get to the to the S like the elevator to go down. That like takes you I'm, to Act Two. Yeah, I haven't done that yet. <laughs> Dog. I know. Oh my. I'm a God. I'm a friend of the mycelium. That's fun. It that that part was a lot of fun. That part yeah. was was quite a bit of fun. Well, how how have you been? I I've, think we got a little bit into your week. I've been good. Um, still playing Baldur's Gate. Uh, and enjoying it a lot. I was talking to my cousins about it last night because they both kind of like games, especially my my younger one, the one who bought the, the Zalra hoodie. He's yeah. really into games and. I was telling both him and my older cousin that like I would not recommend spending 60 or $70 on a game these days unless it was truly the greatest thing since sliced bread. And I don't think I've had as much fun playing a game by myself since Skyrim. Like mm. you guys have to get this game. Um, other than that though, uh, IRL, this is post new years, right? So yeah, I got into Halo Infinite again, which felt really good. So I think I said in the last episode, I looked over and Planker was playing Master Chief Collection. I hopped in on New Year's Eve. And he was still playing Halo, just like messing around on Legendary. And then once we hit midnight, him, myself, and uh, White Wing, Isaac, and eventually Scotty, were like, dude, let's play Halo Infinite. And we all played Infinite because it's like free multiplayer. And it was like high school levels of fun. Infinite nice. Halo is truly back. If you guys are like, oh, Halo was a crusty launch. It was. It sucked. It was really bad. Halo is back. Infection, big team, action sack, super fiesta, firefight. It's it's good. It's back. Um, only downside Halo. to that. It, hmm? Halo would be a good one for me to play on the TV. Halo is great. Because that's just a controller anyway. It is like, It is a controller, and here's my issue, the only issue with controller. I have had to play mouse and keyboard the last couple times I've played because somebody who shall remain nameless right there um, tried to like jump on my leg while I was yeah. playing. And when I put my controller down to be like, stop it, she took the cord and pulled the controller down and snapped the little thing, like bent it, <gasps> yeah. and my Xbox controller wouldn't connect to it. Oh. And I have, I have, I've had to play on mouse and keyboard. And I went from like, I was leading the team in Firefight yeah. every single time. I was first or second in SWAT, and in humbled. Super Fiesta. <laughs> I went from that to like I think we played a game of Husky Raid. I think I got four kills and died thirty five <laughs> times because I'm like, they're like, Ox, you gotta use your equipment. Ox, you gotta melee. I'm like, I I know what to do. I have the battle <laughs> sense. I don't have the muscle memory because I've never used mouse and keyboard to play Halo before. That's hilarious. So I was struggling hard. I need to get a new uh, cord to to hook my Xbox controller up, but. Um, like I said, I did get I back into RuneScape me. a little bit. Um, last night, one of my buddies had a graduation party because he finally graduated from college. Uh, mm. um, so we sent, I think, a chambers and then did what everyone does on their graduation party, uh, Barbarian Assault. So <laughs> I got there late, so they did a lot more like raids and stuff without me. But we did raids and we did BA. And I say a month is a good time frame because... Going back to Chambers after a month of not playing RuneScape, roughly, felt good. I didn't feel like, you know, oh, 
I don't know what I'm doing. Like I did make a joke. I was like, all right, guys, I'm going to run in first. I'm going to dump like six specs and then kill myself. And they're like, what? And I'm like, never mind. Just, just go. Cause it was what they I would do in leagues. <laughs> um, but it, it, it felt fine. Like raids felt fine. BA felt fine. Um, it was, it was fun. It was a good time. My, my friend who graduated, uh, Arianix got a, a, a deck slit on 2KC on his group Iron Man. So fun, fun stuff. Uh, but that's the only time I've actively played. And all the other times I've been logged in, I have been considering quitting RuneScape because I have been star mining the, for like the entire week. Um, I think there was one day I didn't log in. So my login every day is already broken for my Jagex, yeah. whatever. I, I'm not going to get 365. Um, but I have been mining and I'm. And this is why mining just hurts my heart, right? It's like 20 to 25K an hour doing star mining um, mm -hmm. on my phone, on my computer, whatever it is. And it's super chill. Having yeah. talked to other people who have maxed, a big thing is to like just have RuneScape open while doing other shit, which I generally don't like doing. Um, but I did it this week while playing BG3. Uh, and it worked, I guess. Got a couple hundred K mining XP. I'm sitting at 146K till 92. And depending on how long this episode goes, I might get it here at MLM, depending on how long mm -hmm. we record for. But I would not promise that. I would not promise that I'm going to get that kind of XP today. Um, but again, you know, you never know. So I'm thinking. If I suffer and play other games and I get mining done by like the middle of February, we can max for sure. Nice. I think that's because I was doing the math. I'm like, if I get like a hundred K a day at work, mm -hmm. just intermittently, I get a hundred K a day. That is like about a month of AFK playing. Um, yeah. And like I've said, I've gone on the VM trips because I need to start pulling favors for VM. So maybe if I'm feeling like being more active, get the, get the volcanic mine going and speed it up a bit. Saves you a couple hours. Uh, yeah. yeah, but it saves me a couple days at that point. Oh, if, I, if I do a 600K right, right, right. VM sesh over a couple of hours... That cuts six days off of my AFK time that I can be AFKing yeah. something else for right. faster XP. Um, so that's kind of my plan for mining. And the plan is do it without really doing it. You know, like mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I might try 3T4G just to say I could do it for a little bit. Because again, it's one of those like high level skilling things that I want to be able to say that I can do, but don't like doing it. So I won't, you know. Um, yeah. so I'll maybe learn that, but likely it's going to be stars or MLM and maybe volcanic mine if I'm feeling active, but yeah. I think that's got to be like where we're at. If, if we're the, if the boys are raiding, I'll take a raid, but like, I'm not motivated to, to, to train Slayer. I'm not motivated to kill any particular boss right now. I think I'm still like smoldering from the burn, so I'm not like ready to get back into it and take on all my goals. But like, I don't know. I'll I'm gonna collect a bunch of clue geodes from mining, so I'll do the master clues I get from stacking those up. But like, I don't know. I think that's a great plan, honestly, dude. Like, it's just gonna be gonna slow. This year, it's gonna be so slow. Get it out of the way. Get the I get know. the ones that you don't like out of the way first. Don't leave him to last night. I, I think you're gonna do great. Oh, like genuinely, I think like agility and mining or agility and rune crafting are obviously going to be slow. But between Sepulcher and Guardians of the Rift, and having a job where if I'm not working, I can sit on my phone. Or again, like I said, my best advice is get a RuneScape podcast. Right, running laps while editing. Um, like. I'm not as worried about those two. I don't think those are going to take me as long. I don't think those are going to make me as like, oh, as mining is. 
So let's yeah. get the worst of the worst out of the way. Because, like, even if we get to, like, July and I only have the big three done, the big three slow ones, wood cutting and fishing are going to be slow. I should get the gathering ones done. I should finish that whole, not that whole column, but viables I'm not worried about. But wood cutting is so chill with redwood. It's like you won't even notice it. Oh, yeah. No, I know it's chill. Redwoods will be another, like, he's playing BG3 on his, like, 12th playthrough. (laughs) Uh, Just like, because that's what I've been doing. Literally, I I had Baldur's Gate open on my my monitor on the left side. We're a Baldur's Gate 3 podcast now, by the way. Um, And (laughs) stars open on the other side. And my PC goes like, doom every time I go AFK in Mm. game. Every seven minutes. every, Every couple of minutes, I just, like, escape, click on the new star, smashing, and just let her go. So, smash. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 relaxing enough, and I feel like redwoods will be more or less the exact same way when I'm oh, going for yeah. redwoods. Um, how was your experience power mining for I hated uh, it. minerals? You hated it. I didn't power mine, so for me, I was already at amethyst, and I just mined amethyst until I had the gloves. Yeah, I I can't like I cannot focus while I'm power mining, and it's not an activity that I enjoy enough to do for 15 hours straight. Damn, it's 15 hours. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, it's not fun. So I thought to miss like when I was doing it, I was like, I don't mind (laughs) just mining amethyst. So I'll just get them passively. Are you going for the expert mining gloves? Not right this second, but I feel like yeah. if the expert mining gloves make Amethyst super AFK, well, we were talking about it the other day in a VC, and I think TMD was like, dude, if you go from 92 to 99 with this calculation, which I don't think is correct, you'll make 130 mil. I'm like, yeah, I can't wait to do that in four years because Amethyst <laughs> is so goddamn slow. Well, um, it's funny enough, Amethyst is like, I think 20k an hour. Yeah. And you're getting 30k an hour at stars. It's so like, it's yeah, not Amethyst that is 20k. Different. Stars are like 25 to 30. MLM is like 30 to 40. Right now it's just getting 50k an hour at MLM, which I don't think is correct. That's accurate. Uh, That's accurate. It'll drop to 40 well, cuz I'm recording. Um, oh. and I still have to do achievement of the week while you do community questions. So it'll drop for sure. <laughs> um but yeah, I'm I just want to be done with That's it a great plan. already. A great so. plan. And I think, I don't know, I, by the end of it, I enjoyed mining and it has become one of my favorite skills just because I like the methods. Um, I, I mean, I've gotten to, I've gotten to over 90 mining on two accounts so far. And so, and I liked it for the, for the reason that you're, you're doing it. You're doing it while you're doing other things. Like being able to do MLM while I was working was very, uh, very easy for me, um, which made it made it go by pretty quick. Like I didn't feel I didn't feel like I was really straining to play the game, which is great. <laughs> Mima said Michael loves three T four G. I've never actually done three T four G. Funny enough, so I may try it. Uh, I don't have any plans to get any higher than the level I am now. Which it's kind of just happening passively. I'm getting I'm 150k till 93 on the group Iron Man. As long as I guess as long as I can stay one level ahead of Oxy, I'll get 99 eventually. <laughs> I'm gonna call him the dogs. I'm gonna get immortal on my ass. And we'll just he's gonna like immortal at M at Volcanic Mine is gross. Cause he's like I didn't hear no bell. I gotta pee. He's like logging on mobile. I don't care. Uh, you're gonna you're gonna mine you're gonna get this shit done that man oh. will he'll 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 push you. he'll go he'll push you so what are we talking about today i feel like we're we're at the end of the an era as it seems with one of our favorite temporary game modes we are by the time this episode comes out i believe leagues is no more I believe this episode comes out the day after League's ends or the mm-hmm. day League's ends. Um, and this episode, we're putting a cap on League's four. We're giving our final thoughts on it. Um, yeah, I guess 
do we want to get right into it? Do you have a structure that you think we should follow or no structure? Um, structure on XP waste is a bit of a, an inside joke because Michael and I really haven't had that for a while. Which side tangent is your new? By the way, this is one of those side tangents. Um, when we first started, we like very adamantly wanted to follow a structure for several weeks at a time, and we would cut a lot out of podcasts to make the episode shorter. I recently started listening to the Atlas Loom. Um, which is a podcast with two, I found them both on TikTok. They're content creators who do like D&D and stuff like that. Um, mm. And they talk about world building. And they talk all the time about stuff that gets cut out of their episodes. And I remember, like, I'm listening to it nostalgically. Like, I remember when we used to do that. And it wasn't until the Discord was like, what do you mean an hour is too long? No, two hours, three hours, four hours. <laughs> like, so... There we used to be a very rigid structure with how Michael and I did these things. And then you guys were like, we don't care. We'll just talk. And we're like, okay. So, yeah, structure is not really the thing we do around here. But I guess let's, let's start with what we liked and then what we didn't like. And then we should start with what we didn't like. Start with what get we the, didn't like. Get, get the neg you know, make it like a like a, a fun sandwich. Like we talk about that's good, bad, bad good. Like top it's a fun off. sandwich. What is good, bad, good? <laughs> talk about a, I was thinking like good, bad, change, and then a question at the end that I have for you. Okay. So let's do that. Good, bad, change. Um the only uh, right off the top of my head, the one of the bad things was not being able to teleport with last recall on your pets and i know that's a league's thing it's been a league's thing since uh first trailblazer when they had last recall um but it was just kind of annoying it took like it took me out of the immersion of leagues because i wanted to be able to show off my pets and have my pets out but that was some like pretty much impossible because almost everything you do in the later stages of the game is just made more convenient by last recall um, so having the ability to like, I don't know, like I want uh, have your pet out. It's just kind of not a thing unless you're just AFK skilling. And even then though, being able to just like last recall to the bank that you just teleported from when you're done was nice without having to like pick up your pet and then redrop it. It's annoying. Um, so a little, like a little context to what we're going to say. A lot of this stuff is going to be if it's good, bad, or change, is all going to be dependent on the relics that we chose and the areas that we chose as well. Because mm -hmm. um, I, I have no knowledge of like Trickster or Fairy's Flight or because I played with those relics very briefly on my, on my alt account. And the main account that I had was obviously a different build. So um, I have another one. These are my two main ones. This one is having to do with Production Prodigy. There were things that Production Prodigy uh, was very convenient for. And then there was things that Production Prodigy didn't even work to, to do. Like what? Um, like if you, were, uh, if you were enchanting necklaces, pretty sure it did them all one by one. Mm -hmm. um, if you were, I don't know, like there was just other things. Um, like, <sighs> the things that it didn't do was so random like why would that not work with production prodigy you know what one really drove me up a wall it was what? fletching bolts so it would, yeah. it would you would cut an entire yeah. inventory into like arrow shafts but you still had to do 15 at a time to to notch right. the arrows and then 15 at a time to put the arrowheads on which like i think might be a restriction on the game itself because like let's look at broad bolts for example if you buy a hundred thousand broad bolts and a hundred thousand feathers, is that XP drop gonna crash the game? Because mm. like to get a big XP drop, I think the only way right now in game that I can think of to get like a six or seven digit XP, like a seven digit XP drop, is with wines, and that takes yeah. a shit ton of focus for a long yeah. period of time, and I feel like it's almost like. I don't know how the numbers work, but in my head, the game 
recognizes there's 14 wines. Now there's 28 wines. Now there's 32 wines. Uh-huh. And it can like... Somebody who knows math or coding, let me know if this makes sense, but it's like stacking the XP, right? And it's not just like, so you're getting like a one mil XP drop. Oh my God, it's crazy. But it's not like a hundred thousand units of XP all at one Mm. time, right? And with boosted rates, I feel like that could, that's a lot. So I feel like I, I understand why it doesn't do that, but I know what you mean with like, enchanting bolts, enchanting jewelry, making bolts, making arrows, like some of that stuff for production projects is like, man, and not Mm -hmm. that it's like a game breaking problem. It's a, it's a nitpick. I feel like, I feel like this is going to be the summation of Michael and I's like, (laughs) we didn't like about the league. They're going to be nitpicks. That's a spoiler alert for the stuff that we liked, but I, I know exactly what you mean with production prodigy. Yeah. Those are really the only two things I think, right now i didn't like um maybe an honorable mention was that like pets rates weren't boosted so it still felt really bad to get to 70 million farming xp and not have a chance at the pet until until you get to 200 mil unless you get uber lucky because i did the math and at 70 million xp if you were to go with off of like main game rates you're only at like four or five million xp total and that's nowhere near the rate for the tangle root uh tangle roots like i think on rate you have to be a at least 60 to 80 mil i think with with getting it on rate which is insane it's it's way too rare in my opinion but um the yeah getting to 70 million xp not even having a pet was kind of stinky um and i didn't i i mean i could have gotten 200 mil there was a method that we that we learned with going into chambers and just like doing noxifer i think it was planting noxifer um i think somebody said that was like 75 million xp per hour or something um but you had to have a full team of people and i i just never got to that point mm-hmm. to care very much um and leagues is over i'm not playing it anymore there's no way to do it it's fine um but that that's probably an honorable mention. I'm in the main game right now, and this is just a funny aside because we're talking about leagues. I I was about to go make mithril darts for my dust devils task. And I almost put all four thousand bars in my inventory in a note form to go to to go to the anvil. But I stopped myself. We're good. Like I said, a month is a good break because I didn't yeah. Like I went into chambers with my usual main game chambers supplies, overload, prayer enhance, three revites, the rest brews. Mm-hmm. And I was comfortable with that. I didn't I wasn't like, oh god, I don't have enough sharks to sustain, you know. I was <laughs> yeah. I should be doing Priftinous Agility right now. I forgot we unlocked Prif. We did. We did unlock Prif. I was doing Slayer. I, I misspoke in the last episode. I thought that I was 85 Slayer already on my group Iron Man. I'm not. I'm only 83. So uh, 87 is still a long way away. And I, I was going to hopefully have that by the time that we do another bingo. But um, you know, I, don't th- I don't know. It's going to be a while. 87 is nearly 4 million XP. And right now I'm at 2.7 mil. So. That's uh, what, 2.3 2. million XP divided by about 20K an hour, I think. I'm doing my math on my calculator. That's a long damn time. Two, That's all three, you got to know. That's a long damn time. That's 115 hours of Slayer. That does not seem... Is that really correct? To go from 2. 82 3. to 87 or 83 to 87 is 115 80. hours. Yeah, so it's it's 2.3 million XP total. That seems oh, no, no, it's not. No, sorry, it's 1.3. So yeah, that seems Say wild that in the 80s to do. Yeah, no, sorry, it's only 65 hours. Okay, <laughs> still, I was doing, still like a lot of hours, but like, damn, I was doing, <laughs> I was doing it to get to 5 million <clears throat> XP and not not 4 million. So, uh, 65 hours of just straight, semi-decent. Definitely possible before bingo. Yeah. 
definitely possible, but I also don't want to just do Slayer. I want to do other things. Anyway, um, I if I think of anything else that I didn't like about the league, I'll, I'll interject, but I think it's uh, I think it's your turn to talk about what you didn't like. I mean, as far as th- you definitely covered a lot of what I was like, eh, I'm not a big fan of. I think the the pet rate staying the same as main game is a really cool <clears throat> it's both a really cool flex and a really cool way to like feel good about league's pets right because they're temporary like yes they carry over and it's kind of fun to be like you know i can say that i got a three kc fazani's nightmare pet i think i i have two kc regular nightmare and i had three kc fazani's when i got the pet um so I think that's cool. That ugly little lady is going to follow me to all the other leagues, right? And it's it's fun. I think that pet rates are are fine since their main game, but I can see why for skilling pets, for example, um, the skill translation, it doesn't really make sense to get a skilling pet sub 200 mil. So that I understand. Mm-hmm. Um, other... I guess like gripes I had about the league. I I'm not a fan. Like they, they still make mistakes with clue scrolls. Like, Oh yeah. Like this I is again, this is more that. of like a, a retroactive nitpick. Cause I know they fixed most of it, but I kind of want to put the heat on as a player and be like, I, I don't want to see this again. I don't want to, have another league where like leagues five clue scrolls still don't work in the first week. Yeah. Right. Like if there's one thing I want them to dedicate just a little bit more time to it's making sure that they work on day one and that people can't get a thousand master caskets off the rip and that people, if it's another region locked league, no steps or items outside the region, please God. Like we we've done the work now. The groundwork is established from this league. Done well. All the steps should be sorted by region somewhere in a Google Drive for you guys. So the next time yeah. this happens, you can just plug and play, right? That's one thing I don't necessarily want to see. How did you feel about the static point thresholds? Did you feel they were appropriate? Or did you feel they were too much, too little? Mm. I thought they were good. I don't know what my experience would have been in this league had the like the the goalposts kept moving. Like had had it been to where you're getting to the last days and you're no, suddenly not in Rune Cup anymore. Because when when it if it was if since it was a static point threshold, I was able to go through the task list pick out tasks that I know I could do and map out my journey for like the last two or 3000 points specifically with, with exact, the exact tasks that I wanted to do. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, Emeritus actually helped me create a document. I was like 10,000 points away and he went through and he looked through the wiki and saw all the tasks that I could do like 10 point all the way up to 200 point tasks. And like he gave me an entire list, and that wouldn't have been possible had the goalposts kept moving, yeah. Um, towards the end of the league, so I thought that I liked it. I liked that change a lot. Um, I hadn't really played competitively with a non-static um point threshold, so like uh, where you know it was constantly changing depending on who, like the the percentages. I hadn't really played much with that style of league and. Just knowing what I know from you, it was not fun. So the second I'm kind of glad that they did fun. it. I think the first yeah. time, because I was an unemployed student, it was a lot better because I could like stay up all night and like do random mm. shit. Like I think the last time, the first Trailblazer League, I was like there at the close. Like I stayed up till That's like cool. six o'clock in the morning that day because I was with. I remember I, I've told the story. I met up with my buddy Greg and Varrock, and we all walked with the J mods to Lumbridge, and we ended the league in Lumbridge where we began, and that was the end of Trailblazer. I literally, it was like five thirty, six o'clock in the morning when that happened. I got booted off the server, and then I went to sleep. And that was cool because, like, 
I got to experience that. You know, I was like pushing to the end the whole time. And like the last day is what pushed me to Rune Cup because I got the extra points that I've just been sitting on being lazy about. Um, Shattered Relics was a different animal. Shattered Relics, I did not have as good a time doing that because um, I was at a different point in my life. Uh, and I think in hindsight, 42K for Rune Cup is fine. Um, I think though with the static points right this is i don't know if it's a critique more than it is like a threat right jagex can never go back to the moving gold post now mm -hmm. because this static point threshold i think players now had a target it yeah. wasn't like, oh, C Engineer got 4,000 points on day one and he's in the top 1%. That's the Dragon Cup cutoff. Because I noticed in the other leagues, because I looked in my... If you go to your POH, if you have a leagues room, which I do, I have all three Rune Cup trophies on there now. It looks so good. Nice. Um, but I I looked and like I think I had like 33,000 points in the first Trailblazer, like 36,000 in the second Trailblazer. And I was still top 5% at that rate. And I, but what I think that does, what static does, is players say, all right, 56,000, we're honing in. We're getting mm -hmm. 56,000. And it leads to, like, I think I said last week, friend got every single task done. Like, if you're going with a, a moving goalpost, as you've said, if you're a casual player, if you're an adult with like, you know, a job or a child or any other responsibilities, like if you don't do this professionally, even if you do do this professionally, like I know what it is like to like, you can't edit a video and be super active in this game. Like, yeah, editing a podcast is listening for when I say the word f or when for Michael stumbles on words. It's not like... This compared to editing a video like a YouTuber does, so much more work for what they have to do. You can't do theater of blood while editing a video. You can't do Inferno while editing a video, right? So there's, it's like only a special kind of player can hit that top rank. And I think now that players have seen like, oh no, we can just do every task. I don't think we can go back to the moving goalposts. Um, and have people have as not as good of a time, but like, I don't think I would have as good of a time yeah. without, with the moving goalposts anymore. Um, I just don't think I've got the same drive, I think. So I just don't think Jagex can ever go back from the static, which I don't think is bad necessarily, but I think if they had intended to, they shouldn't. Um, I will say upon first look, it seemed really high to get 42,000 points. Like I felt like I was grasping yeah. at straws at some points to get from like, cause it's like, you don't even get your first cup till 5,000 points. Like yeah. you don't even get, like you are not guaranteed to get a cup until 5k points. That's a lot. You know, like you probably got five. You that? probably, it's like tier four or five. <laughs> like, yeah, it's a lot. You probably got 5,000 points or less on your iron, and you got like Iron Cup for Shattered Relics League. And Iron Cup's like a 10,000 point thing, um, or whatever it was. I think at, at first glance, the point thresholds are super high. So I don't know if they could be tweaked a little bit. I don't know what data they could look at and adjust them a little bit, but like it's it was a 10,000 point difference from Trailblazer 1 to Trailblazer 2 for Rune Cup. Um I would be interested to see what the true Rune Cup and what the true Dragon Cup stats are, like the the real top 1 and the real top 5. Mm. Um cuz that would be a super cool statistic to see. So I mm -hmm. hope they release that sometime soon if they haven't already. Um but yeah, I I I think that the points are static is good. I'm wary of them changing it later, though I hope they don't. Yeah. Yeah, I would agree. I, it, it doesn't make sense for them to go back to doing it any other way, because I think, I think a lot of people were um, given an opportunity that they didn't have before. Like I said 
just a few minutes ago. I don't think I would have gotten Rune Cup. I think this would have been another Mithril Cup League for me because of the drive that I was able to have, um, knowing I had a goal, a specific goal. And there was a lot of people playing the leagues that I think were like achieved a certain rank that they wouldn't have been able to before. Like a ton of people in our Discord got got Dragon Cup. And I've not seen that many Dragon Cups in a long time. Yeah. Like ever, actually. Not even just a long time. Ever. So it was it was, it was really cool. Another thing about clues, because this whole conversation kind of sparked with clues. Um I with the clue relic, you were given so many, so many clues. And if I could change one thing or one gripe with the clue relic, was that like I, I think I ended the league with like over 500 beginner clues. That's a lot. And once I green logged it at like 77 beginner clues, I would have loved a option to, um, I would have loved the option to just like turn off getting clues of a certain tier. So that like, maybe if you turn off beginner clues, your other clue tiers are boosted more. Mm -hmm. Like I didn't have as many medium clues as I did easy clues for some reason and so like having the ability to boost certain tiers would be cool yeah um you know another a neat feature would be another neat feature what's that in instead of turning them off which i think turning them off is a decent idea gambling them Mm. so like you can gamble a beginner clue and you have a 50 percent chance of getting an easy clue and then you oh, can just cool. gamble up your clues to higher tiers. Because like, oh, wow. I have 400 beginner clues. What the f*** am I going to do with 400 that's beginner like clues? 200 easies at that point. Yeah, if like that's... Right. Exactly. So like that's yeah. that could be pretty cool with a clue relic to like gamble clues up, if that makes sense. Nice. Gambling clues clues would be cool. I think another, another really neat thing would be with the clue relic. I mean, we're kind of getting into like... We're getting into changes. changes. Yeah. That's fine. I do bad change and then good. Um... The one thing I would change about the clue relic is the ability for it to drop master clues. Because if somebody didn't have, like, if they took the clue relic and they didn't have uh, Zaya. Zaya unlocked, you were limited to like getting them within other clues or like getting the casket um, randomly, which I don't think ever, it didn't ever happen for me to where I was doing like an elite clue and I got a master casket, but it may have been. But like, it would have been cool if, if bosses that could have dropped um, an elite clue, they also had the chance to drop an actual master clue. Just a little change there. Yeah. Um, I think... It, it, go ahead. To shift into another thing that I didn't really like, and I think this is more of like a foundational issue with leagues, um, I understand it's it's not avoidable always, but with the relics, I don't like when relics in later tiers make relics in earlier tiers redundant. And the biggest yeah. example of that that I saw this league was Farmer's Fortune into Soul Stealer. Mm. And I think Which I did actually. I think that one really wasn't the not that it wasn't poorly planned out because like you choose it intentionally. Like your decisions are your decisions, but I don't love the idea that like, you know, I made 1500 four dose prayer pots. I'm set for the rest of the league. And now I don't ever need a prayer pot. Cause I never lose prayer potions. Like at that point it becomes the 99 farming and 99 herb lore relic and doesn't serve you as well. Right, I can I actually think... speak to that. Like, I I chose Farmer's Fortune and Soul Stealer, and I think I made fifty prayer potions the entire league. If there was a task for it, I, I did the task, and then I I didn't really ever make more. I made imagine made... making potions and not just taking them from Theater of Blood. <laughs> oh, I did. I took a bunch of potions. I never used them though. I I I kid you not. With the fact that I had uh um an altar in my house for prayer i rarely used potions i think there was one god wards boss that drains your prayer i think it was krill sammy yeah. and 
yeah, I would I would take a prayer potion there just in case. But almost 99% of the time, I was teleporting back to my house and restoring my prayer and my spec and then going back to what I was doing. And Slayer was a joke because with the with the amount of time that you had, you are like actually attacking my prayer was at 99 almost the entire time yeah. for soul stealer i i i didn't need prayer potion and i took a ton of resource from um from tob but never used them because i didn't use bruise either because i had and oh, i i feel like i am validated in what i was saying and got criticized for before the league start but like banker's note nobody really took bruise and resource anywhere anytime you saw somebody with banker's note they just had a stack of sharks because you could go buy sharks and cook them with production prodigy yeah i, I so will like, you i could will buy say, cooked food per, perhaps i judged you too harshly daughter kidding i with the tankiness of the melee relic because like if you're gonna use bruise anywhere in the league with the regions we took it's gonna be tob and inferno um and the tankiness of the melee relic in combination with just like just too many sharks like just just so many like a comical amount like if you die you died on purpose like amount of food (laughs) um you know I, I will say you're right. I think I used, I brought a, like an emergency brew into Tob in case I needed a combo <laughs> eat if I didn't have my nuke. But yeah, I don't think I used, I think I have like 200 brews in my league's bank right now because I didn't, I didn't use them. I think there was a task to make 20 of them. And that's, that is the extent of how many I made. This I used it to week. train Herblore. It's, oh, it's, it's a good Herblore training method. If you did the giant mole task, if you killed all the giant mole, turned not. all the mole claws in, uh, you got hella bird nest, which was another thing production prodigy should do, building off of what you've already said. One tick crush bird nest. Pestle and mortar should be included in production prodigy. That's true. Because crushing individual resources, it's not that it's like a bad mechanic. It feels bad when every other part of the process is done instantly, but that part has to be done individually. Yeah. Like it's. I think that's the consistency piece of production prodigy that I wish yeah. they leaned more into. And I wish they lean more into for next time, I guess. Yeah. So if they do production prodigy again, there's just other things. Will. Yeah, hopefully there's like, okay. Another example is like making saplings. You still have to individually add every seed and you had to water each individual sapling. It wasn't like you could just click one and they, Every sapling that should yeah that should be built into like the farm created like I think yeah like where it just creates them all oh, and you true. plant them and it immediately turns into a sapling like you don't have to go through like the farming oh, tick the process was so annoying. yeah I think that should be something implemented into the farming relic next time but I I don't know there's not a ton of examples of this which kind of leads into a praise of leagues right okay, okay. this league we've said it once and we've said it again they're <sighs> There was really, really not many bad relic choices. Yeah, which is I would agree. such the like, probably the biggest praise I can give the J mods for this league is that almost every relic was a good choice, mm-hmm. other than Equilibrium. Which, for the love of God, you guys have got to do something about Equilibrium. It is leagues. Make it a tier seven. Make it a high tier skilling relic, and make it fucking ridiculous that like people want to take it. Equilibrium, I yeah. bet you, is the least chosen relic of them all, because like, yeah, Infernal Tools is not a playstyle that I enjoy, but Endless Harvest, Infernal Tools, that's like six ninety nines right there in the books. Like that's, mm-hmm. it's not bad, right? And it's it's a yeah. big time save, so. I don't know. Having all of the relics feel like good decisions, especially at the higher end, that was good. It was it was just it just made for good gameplay and it made for yeah. like wanting to do content with other people with different relic combinations. Like even when you and I would do content together, we had the same regions with the same uh primary weapon, but when we diverted into different like towards the end we diverted into getting different stuff Mm -hmm. it it felt good to you know like 
you having sustain at Tob with not knowing how to do Tob is awesome. And me being able to kill myself because I'm a reckless idiot and survive and keep doing Tob also felt really good, you know? Um, Absolutely. I I really got to say they have took what they've learned from the other three leagues and they have that's the biggest improvement from from Trailblazer Reloaded. Absolutely. Is all but equilibrium, they're all good relics. I would even argue for equilibrium to the people who chose it. They I I haven't heard anybody say that they chose it and like used it to its full potential and didn't like it. I've literally not heard someone say that they took it. There's I don't think a, I've the, met anyone who took Equilibrium. <laughs> the one guy that's um, Graylon, who is in our Discord, he is the guy who had several 200 mils. And I believe he took Equilibrium. And he's like in the high 150s or near like a hun- like rank 100 or something. Top 100 in leagues or top 400. I don't know. He's He has several 200 mils and he took Equilibrium. And there was a there's a write up in one of the YouTube comments that like explained how it worked and it still I it didn't make sense to me and I didn't want to choose the relic to figure out how it worked. But in a in an ideal situation, I think how I would like to see equilibrium work is that you get base XP for every skill dependent on your total level. Uh and even if it's a small amount, if you do one action, you get XP in every skill. And it just, it builds on that. And so it's like the maxing relic or the 200 mil all relic. Um, Because that's a lot of points. Like maxing was not an insignificant amount of points. So there was actually, I was looking at the high scores earlier when you were talking about friend. And there's now two people at, at the time of recording that have done every single task. Um, And then there's one person at the time of recording that has hit 4.8 bill 200 mil in every skill that's yikes i know dude and they are barely in the dragon cup <laughs> they're like at fifty nine thousand points but so. you, you have a different goal at that point if you're going for 200 mil all your goals yeah. for leagues are different than yeah than anything it's so else. cool that they got dragon cup while doing insane methods to get xp yeah because there's stuff that's still like nearing the bottom of the barrel like 600k an hour Mm -hmm. so it's not a slow matter to get 200 mil all i mean sorry it's not a fast thing in some cases i can just wake up and choose to get 200 mil all yeah i i just to clicking to cat that off great job for jagex yeah i would agree making relics that don't feel bad um i don't think any of the regions really feel bad this time like last time Desert was stinky. It was yeah. gross. Desert was Fremenic was not good either. Fremi really wasn't wasn't great. Like Tyronwind was also okay. It had yeah. some spe- like, if you were a ranger, Tyronwind was okay. Uh and then it also the didn't Bofa. have you didn't have Zay. It didn't have Bofa, you're right. So like yeah. you only went to Tyronwind for the blowpipe. Blowpipe. Yeah. So And we didn't have Zaya, you're right. Yeah, I think to improve on this league from the last two or three leagues, every region felt like a good choice. Now there were bad combinations of regions. Yeah. You could you could have chosen like I don't know what a bad or like weird region combo. Like you could have been a wizard who took like Mauritania, Tyronwin, and Wilderness or something. And like <laughs> That's that's a bad combination of regions for the play style that you want. Mm-hmm. But it's not to say that those regions are individually bad. And you probably could make a build with the Mauritania uh Tyronwin wilderness build. Mm-hmm. Right? There's something you can do with that. I don't know what it is. It's probably a super niche melee build. Like Blade of Saldor, Inquisitor, Ursine Chain Mace. Void Waker. Void Waker. It's like a weird... <laughs> me- you could probably make a really weird melee build with that. But my point is, like, there was no region that was like, ooh, you chose Desert? I hope you don't mind, like, hating yourself doing that. 
That was um, definitely the first one. The first Trailblazer, nobody really chose the desert because there the, was no raid. There was no and, raid, but again, like we discussed with Weeskill now, that first the desert region, it didn't have a like a raid that bogged down a lot of the tasks and were very time consuming. Mm-hmm. So it was a lot of points, but it just didn't feel like fun gameplay content. Yeah. No yeah. no region was like that. All of the relics except for equilibrium in my opinion lended to really good gameplay, lended to a lot of fun. Um yeah, I, I think overall like the thing like I'm trying to think of like something I would change for well, the here's a question league. for you. Hmm. If there was anything that you could have done differently, what would it be? Like having seen all the relics in action, do you regret not regret, but do you do you wish that you would have chose anything in, in differently? I because will there's say one that I think I would have chose differently. I will say there are a lot of times when I thought to myself, Trickster and Farmer's Fortune would have been good. And I don't think it's because the relics I took were bad. I think it's because I was a member of the PP gang and I had the Ruinous Powers, right? I couldn't not choose Ruinous Powers. Like, for me, they're like, hey, we made this prayer book that, like, you guys didn't want. And then, like, a day before the leagues, when Poison Potion got there and he's like, oh, yeah. Ruinous powers are coming to leagues four. Are you fucking kidding me? There's no way I I had to pick ruinous powers, right? Yeah. And I had a lot of fun with what I like chose, but I think the issue that I saw and I wanted to have different relics was that like production skills felt so good mm-hmm. that thieving felt so bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it was like the grass is greener for the skills that you are not super proficient with right. um and i think that's what kind of pushed me to be like damn i am gonna jump off a bridge thieving ham members i wish i had trickster um but like it was often immediately silenced by like I have to clean 500 cad and tines from tob <laughs> i'm gonna do that in 30 seconds Right. Um, Absolutely. And that's genuinely what would happen sometimes. So I think yeah. some of the skills that that I wasn't relic proficient with felt bad. Mm-hmm. And then like farming didn't feel great all the time, you know, just cuz like I'm watching people get 300 million experience an hour at Tithe Farm. Like I want that, you know. Um but like <laughs> I I can't. It's like I had to play Tithe Farm regularly, and that mm. sucked. It boosted points. God bless. God yeah, bless God the bless. boosted points. I think that was the game changer this league. It really if was. I had a to game give changer. any kudos. It was boosted boosted mini game points, dude. Boosted that sh- favor. It was all that so kind of good with like the the relic scaling too, the yeah. XP and the mini game and the Slayer mm-hmm. point boost with every relic you increase. Chef's yeah. fucking kiss. Yeah. For that right there, like that was that was real good with the it mini made game pest control, boost. a viable and fun thing to do. Yeah, like and it that, kept people I never playing. thought about that. It kept I was people doing, playing the mini games, which was right? so good. I was doing pest control set like a week before the league ended, and there was still a, a full veteran boat. People I were still doing it. I've said I've listened to the episode where we talk about leagues, and I'm like, dude, if you're picking Asgarnia, get to pest control immediately because it's going to yeah. be dead after the first week. And yeah. I bet you people played until the end of the league because Probably. it's just that good of XP with the boosted points. So yeah. kudos to you guys for that. I really did appreciate yeah. that. Like um, every hundred points was a million XP. Yeah, so I, every four minutes you get a million XP. I don't Crazy. think. I don't I don't think I re- I definitely don't regret any relic choices that I oh, had. Okay. The relic combinations and the, you know my my primary weapon style with melee, my regions, I don't have any no regrets as it were. No regrets. Um I part of me is like, <clears throat> "Oh, TOA with the boys might have been fun as a demigod." Uh ah. but I don't think I would have wanted to go with desert. I did I really did consider the the three raid region meme, um, which I also don't think would have been a bad shout. But I, if you and, did that, you probably would have had to chose a different style. No, I don't think melee would have been very strong in all three raid regions. I still have a scythe. 
hmm. Scythe and Inquisitor, and I think like I know like Cole and Spari took it, and they're just like Obsidian, Fang Obsidian, yeah, and they're they're rocking with it. <laughs> I yeah. I'm very happy with how I chose things, um, but I think that is it goes back to no relic being a bad relic because when I sit and I envy the tricksters, I, there was one time I was at the farming guild and I was with four or five people who very obviously did not have the trickster relic. Um, and we just kept getting molly whopped by this farmer. Every single one of us was getting stunned. <laughs> and I think somebody said it's a bad day to not be a trickster. And we're all like here, here, PP gang rise up <laughs> because it just like it's normal thieving like doing a skill normally when you do a lot of skills abnormally that are better than the normal way it just didn't feel great right like I imagine yeah. had I chosen trickster having to make 500 brews and restores for herbal XP would have stunk because mm -hmm. I didn't well, that's that's why I chose production project because I had spent like three weeks crafting battle staffs prior to the league, and I'm like, I don't want to do that again, fourteen at a time. I don't want to do that, yeah, um and that I think that speaks to how good all of the relics were, so that I had fomo, but was able to look at what I had and be like, no, this is still a good choice like i don't I didn't pick the wrong thing. I just wish I had something different for this particular skill, but overall I'm happy with this. Yeah. I think if I had two changes I would have made, not necessarily complete changes, but just to see what, you know, if the grass is greener, I think Fire's Note versus Banker's Sale could have been an interesting one to experience going to the end game with Fire Sale just to see what it was like because there was plenty of times where there was a method that I could have done. Um, like there was a method where you can just make a, like a magical element or something. It's, it's in the games room in the POH, but it takes runes instead of construction materials. And so I could have just sat there with 10 million runes and got 99 construction versus having to do a whole ton of mahogany homes. Mm -hmm. um, and that's, that's a viable option. There was a world where, you know, you could get 200 mil cooking a ton easier with Production Prodigy and, um, and Fire Sale because you can just buy Karam ones or buy sharks. I still was able to buy all the sharks, but it was 26 at a time or 27 at a time with Banker's Note. And you just like buy 26 bank or buy 26, note them, and, and you're doing it like that. Uh, crafting would have been an, a lot easier because you can just buy the crafting supplies you need yeah production purchase them, would have done. And purchase them in bulk i think in bulk yeah because that was that was but, the one frustrating part about bankers note is when you bought sharks or gems or whatever it was you had to close out of the menu yeah and note them and then go it was like and then again go back. it's a mild inconvenience it's a nitpick it's not like a, oh this was a bad gameplay decision it was just like hmm. you know <laughs> like yeah and then the other one that i think I truly do regret is picking the clue relic over oh, yeah? infernal tools. Uh, over infernal the, tools, really? Yeah, because um, bloodthirsty was never going to be an option. They 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 completely botched bloodthirsty with the ability to not pick your task. Did they? If they well, tell if, me about that. Uh, how do how do you? So I don't me, think we agree on that. Tell me about. That. Let me talk about the the infernal tools first, and then we'll get into that. So infernal tools for me, I think towards the end of the league, there were several times where I was like. I don't really want to get 99 fishing. This doesn't seem, you know, fun. I don't want to get 99 mining. But those were tasks that I could have, you know, I could have gotten like six or 800 points in those skills just because of how AFK I could have been with Infernal Tools and Banker's Note and the ability to like have a, a dragon pickaxe, have a rune pickaxe, uh, or have a dragon pickaxe, a dragon axe, and a, a dragon harpoon without having to do the content. Um, I don't see how that makes it more AFK, though. I think Endless Harvest makes that way more AFK than Infernal Tools. Um, well, you're consuming it. So, like, if I'm woodcutting, a, a, a percentage of it the It saves logs, time in woodcutting, yes. I will say that. Yeah. And then the cooked food. Obviously, that's two skills. 
I think it's the it's the multiple skills thing that maybe I'm thinking about. Because I think you're right. Endless harvest is what I'm probably thinking is would have saved me time, but I don't I can't give up production prodigy for because, endless harvest. Because again, you're training a skill abnormally. So when you have to go back to like twenty eight logs at a time, bank them and put them away because you need them for or put them in your banker's note or whatever it is, it feels yeah. stinky. There's nothing wrong right. with it. It just feels stinky. Stinky, because you're a god right. with the other skills. Yeah. <laughs> so maybe it was like the fact that I could have been getting mining and smithing XP. Endless Harvest and Infernal Tools, I feel like, was like the god tier um, combination if you wanted to get 200 mil in a lot of skills, or at least 50 mil for the points. Because like you can get, you can train two skills at a time and you don't have to leave the resource that you're at. You can just sit at Redwoods and get you know, 50 mil fire making and 50 mil wood cutting and you never have to leave. That's kind of nice. So I think I would have, I think I would have chosen infernal tools over the clue relic just because having gotten a ton of clues done, I didn't, I didn't feel super like, I didn't feel like I would have towards the end. Like it didn't, it didn't bring, it didn't bring me the joy that I thought it would have having done all of the clues that I did. I think. When I chose the clue relic, I wanted to get a ton of master clues done, but you can still do clues without the clue relic. Um, having the minimum steps was nice, but there was, it was like a guarantee. Now I have to do six or seven steps for a master clue when there's always a chance that, you know, I guess you're doing the minimum amount, so it's always the minimum, but yeah, I don't know. Um, <clears throat> I just didn't enjoy clues as much as I thought I would towards the end and I think I would have enjoyed Infernal Tools more for the gameplay style that I like yeah. um, Bloodthirsty though uh, I don't know like when we, when we think back to the first time that they had a Slayer Relic and the ability to choose your task it was, it was very um, it kind of put you in a, in a corner with the meta because like everybody was killing the same the same monster but in that league i think everybody was on the same continent <laughs> or it was like everyone was in the same three regions everyone was uh mauritania candor and asgarnia so that's, that's what that's what everybody was okay As everyone yeah. was melee uh akm that's what everyone was doing in the first trail so so it didn't it didn't really make sense like you kind of fighting for resources at that point and i don't know what is your thoughts on bloodthirsty because like so to me it 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 would have made the relic a viable choice and the other um the other perks didn't make a huge difference so i think for me the bloodthirsty relic sat pretty fine where it was i didn't take it and that's one thing i, I will say one thing i do regret about this league that again is really kind of out of my control given my life situation and given where given where I'm at like with playing this game. Um I wish I would have been able to get further on my iron to experience more relics. I wish I could have gotten to experience more regions and experience different combat styles. Like I got the mage relic on my iron, like logged out, didn't log back in. Cause like I don't really care that much. Um so I got a I got a nice bronze cup on on oxy fans that's that's all i'm getting um i wish i would have experienced more relics to really speak on bloodthirsty more from what i understand the superior monsters didn't change a ton but it did give you the, the superior uniques which specifically for mages with the imbued heart was big um i i don't think choosing your slayer task is as important with this league only because with the boosted rates, like when you get your combat relic at tier four or tier five, whenever it was your slayer points go up five times and every slayer master gives 15 points from Turiel all the way to Duradel. They all give 15 points per task. It's like an even amount. So 75 points per task with a limited task pool, because you don't have like, depending on what regions you have, it's a limited, it's a very limited task pool. That's two skips per task. And it also, the boost also went with like stacked tasks. 
So all the Slayer Masters shared the same table. So Turiel could assign you, you know, Zuck or, you know, whoever, spiritual creatures, whatever you want. Um, but a lot of the tasks were super quick because they were still scaled to how they would be in the main game. Um, which the one thing I will say I didn't, I, this is something I didn't necessarily love about Slayer. And this is something I wish they change. It did not explicitly tell you that the Slayer unlocks were already unlocked. I remember trying to buy the Tazar one and it wouldn't let me, it wouldn't mm. let me buy bigger and badder. It wouldn't let me buy superior Slayer. Just just check them off when we go to the rewards page to let us mm. know. And another thing I didn't like, it automatically extended every single task mm. for some of them. Like black dragons. I don't want to kill 50 black dragons. When I get a black dragons task, I have unextended them on my main for that reason. Because I don't want to kill 50. I want to kill 10 and get slayer points. Right? Like, yeah. I wish that was an option like make some of the rewards free if that's how you want to do it. I don't know. But when you boost yeah. Slayer points that much, I don't think choosing your own task is 100% necessary because if you stack up Slayer points, if you get like, what, is, what are some like menial tasks? Steel dragons in the catacombs, a Karend, you get Anku. Those are pretty meaningless. The amount of moss giant tasks that I got. Oh my God. With Scythe? Are you kidding me? Like Mm-mm. the amount, of tasks that are so just like bang, 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 rapid fire. You do a couple tasks like that and you're sitting on 500 Slayer points. You can skip the tasks you don't want. So I don't think not being able to choose was an issue because of the boosted Slayer points. If they didn't have boosted points, I think being able to choose is a necessity. Yeah. Um, well, and then from what I, I understand, the, the reward table of like the extra resources, it went really well with some of the, uh, with some of the, like the farming relics, because you got a lot of seeds. Um, so that was something that was cool. I just don't think for this league, choosing your task was 100% necessary. Um, another change I think might be neat to, to have them implement um, for Endless Harvest in particular if production prodigy boosts your production skills like gives you a plus 12 boost just let endless harvest do that just boost hmm. mining wood cutting and fishing with with those skills like yeah because when you have the boost it makes it easier to catch cut or mine which doesn't make a difference at a lower level, but when you get to like magic trees and redwood trees and all that kind of stuff, like having a boost up to 99 or up to 100, whatever the boost caps at, is re- it makes a huge difference. Yeah. So, yeah, absolutely. I, I think they should implement that for Endless Harvest. Uh, IMO. But I would. So, my initial, like my final thoughts on Bloodthirsty. Just in kind of going off of your points, I still used several thousand points to get a Hydra task, and it felt really, really cringe because I didn't even finish the Hydra task because I was so over it. Um, I also think that some of the Slayer Masters having the same table was also really, really like uh, going to Duradel and getting. The, the low, I don't know, like an example. I don't even have an example. But like, you know, I, Moss I Giants from Duradel feels weird. I will admit. Yes. So I, I, I like I wish that. that you liked it, but I didn't like it. And I wish that they kind of kept it the same because you had options. You could go to, even without, like in the, in the regions that we start with, you had Duradel, you had Vanica, you had. Um, Spuria or whatever. It's the Turiel. So you don't get Spuria until you unlock his Garnia. Because oh, really? you have to start well, the should've... quest of the Falador farm. They should have just given you that quest. That's not that hard to auto unlock. Um, you, they could have given you Spuria and they and you have Shaldar. So like without any without unlocking any regions, you have a progression of of Slayer Masters, and they should have kept Duradel have the higher tier wait list. So that when you got to, you know, in the 80s, you didn't just get all the like the low, the low level tasks like you do with the other 
Slayer Masters. It it didn't it didn't really feel great. And the fact that I had to use several thousand points skipping for the tasks that I wanted, um, it felt bad. And yes, you get those you get those like you get the points really fast, but two skips per task and the tasks are still taking you a while. This is leagues. Things are supposed to be quick. I don't I don't I didn't think any slayer task other than my Hydra task took me a very long time. And that's just because bitch gives me 150 hydras like that's gonna even with a two tick site that's gonna take a long time um i i still think i don't know having a universal table helps because spria is not auto unlocked they're not going to auto unlock that quest because what is the point of auto unlocking that quest other than to give people access to spria which Mm, it doesn't necessarily matter, right? If you keep the tables the same, the progression is Turiel, Mazkina, Vanica. So it's Asgarnia, then Mauritania, right? Starting Slayer at Vanica with a universal table, or starting Slayer at Duradel with a universal table, helps people at level 10 get an appropriate Slayer task. Because if you can access every Slayer task and you watch a guide and it says, oh, go to Duradel, and you're like, oh, it's a great idea. And Duradel's like, yeah, how about you get f***ed and give me 200 black demons? You can't do that at a low level. Like, and you don't have Slayer points to skip, and you, you can't, also can't Turiel skip. You also can't get a task until you're 100 combat with, Tur- with Duradel. Do you see how that kind of makes it not fun, though? I mean, I was... No, I don't. I, I don't... That's how it works in the main game, and it's just fine. But but it's not... I don't. I think with leagues, it doesn't have to work like it does in the main game. I think a universal table is always the way to go for League Slayer. Um, because, like, the lower-level shitter tasks, like, okay, cool, here's 30 goblins. I'm rolling up like Darth Vader in the hallway. It's, it's going to take me two minutes, and I'm going to get 75 Slayer points. And for me, I think it that struck a really good chord with me with Slayer. I really did enjoy the way they had the Slayer system for this league. Mm-hmm. Um, here's a question for you to pivot a little bit. Is this the the question that you uh, this is the, in the this beginning? is the question? Yes. Okay. Do you think they should repeat Trailblazer next year, or do you think they should come up with a unique idea? I would love given, to see a, given all we have discussed, right? Given how much we like the relics and the regions and the teasers. Are you kidding me? The Twitter teasers gave me life those they were two great. weeks before. Oh yeah, they were great. my God. I was frothing, dude. I was so excited. Days of Christmas or something. Dude, it was so good. Though that yeah. I will say, I for every piece of content that releases, every major piece of content, they should do a teaser block like that. Mm-hmm. Because that got me. Like it's really cool. Jittering. I was like up and walking around thinking about it. And I shouldn't have been up and walking around because I was injured. That's how excited I was. Humming the fucking leagues tune in my head. You know, like I was like so, so excited because of those teasers. Do you think Trailblazer should be repeated or do you think it's going to be beating a dead horse to do it for a third time in a row now with a back to back Trailblazer league? Yeah, I don't think they should do Trailblazer for a while. Um, maybe in the future, it's like in every other one is Trailblazer, but like you can't call it Trailblazer Reloaded and then do it again. Just make it Trailblazer seems... Three. Trailblazer Reloaded again? No. Um, Trailblazer Reignited. Reignited. Refuel. It would just be beating a dead horse, in my opinion. I, I want. We have a. They have an entire year, and a lot of data to go off of to figure out what type of league. Maybe they do a desert locked league. See if that's a viable option. Um, maybe you're mist still in desert. They haven't had a region locked since the first one. And it worked with Zaya because there was a lot to do in Zaya. Zaya's gigantic. But maybe there's um an entirely new continent that we don't know about. And everybody starts there and it's and it's not anything we've uh, ever seen. You know what? I'm telling you what I think could work. Just redo Twisted League 2. Twisted League 2 would be kind of You cool. want to know why? Varlamore. I'm a motherfucking Varlamore. Yeah. If they did Twisted League 2, that would be kind of cool. Um, but I don't know. Like, you can't... 
you can't keep the momentum um, going if you know if you're just reusing past leagues all the time. There has to be something new. There has to be something that can reignite people's interest in a temporary game mode to actually devote the time to it. So, no, I don't think they should do Trailblazer again for a while. I could definitely see them doing Twisted League again. Shattered Relics would need a lot of um, a lot of work just based on what everybody has said about Shattered Relics because you kind of got pigeonholed into a meta for a lot of things, and that's never really fun. Shattered Relics only... I genuinely think Shattered Relics' downfall was the renown stimmy because you had nothing to work for. Like, it is fine to play fast Iron Man mode when you're already a god and you unlock your final skill and you unlock all the raids, and then you're like... Now I will have all the power, right? Because you're incrementally getting upgrades from specific points, right? You unlock Cerberus, so you only like you're only killing Cerberus, right? You're you're progressing like you would on an iron, but it's in pieces and it's not in the same order. When you got to unlock everything and it became fast Iron Man mode, that was the downfall of Shattered Relics. Mm -hmm. There was a lot of issues with Shattered Relics that I think they remedied this league, which, again, another praise for Trailblazer Reloaded. Y'all took the critiques because I shit all over Shattered Relics last the two years ago. We had like a yeah. whole leagues episode where it's like, yeah, here's a good thing. Here's like 50 things I fucking hated. And here's another good thing. Like that was like my league <laughs> sandwich last year. All Absolutely. of the like the UI issues, all of the the relic choices, all of the the lack of decisions that made any that made or broke a league. You guys did so good creating yeah. Trailblazer Reloaded. Like that's for me. That's probably my ultimate overarching feel. Is yes, I have nitpicks, and yes, I would like to see things changed because I'm a, a six thousand hour deep committed nerd to this game. This has been the best leagues objectively that you guys have put out um so far. Like speaking to the J mods directly. Yeah, as um, if they're listening. <laughs> you never know, dude. I, I feel like it, it's not we've been around for two years, right? Three years. How long have we been three. releasing episodes, Michael? March will be three years. Jesus Christ. Um <laughs> we've been around long enough that like at some point, we have had to have crossed the ear holes of a J-Mod. We've had to be seen on, at least I have had to be seen on Twitter, because I know I'm active on, on Twitter pretty frequently. I lurk. I like a lot of people's stuff. I don't post a ton, but I do definitely lurk. Um, mm -hmm. Like, we're known about somewhere. Right. I don't know if we're, like, the, the most popular, like, we should give these guys a panel at RuneFest. It's like, by the way... If you guys need a live podcast with two people who are going to have a great time talking about runes, RuneScape, um, here, here's what you guys got to do. Jack, guys, hear me out. <laughs> Y'all should give us a panel like an hour or two before you guys do your big summer summit or fall summit, whatever it is, where you give us all the announcements. So we can just wildly speculate with the fans. <laughs> before you guys announce all the shit because michael and i will do that so tiki says i'll only talk about Baldur's gate 3 don't listen bullshit we'll talk about it only a little bit if we're ever <laughs> um it's like how we played you know, we got wi-fi on the plane and we just played Baldur's gate <laughs> dude it'll be no dude we'll do a Baldur's gate play through in act one it'll be me you and two j mods that'll be what it is it'll be it'll be fantastic um yeah i i mean I kind of agree. I don't think they should redo another Trailblazer League for the next league. I, I'm kind of leaning into the Twisted League too, though. That'd be really um, neat. Because of the Varlamore expansion. And I think there's so much more content now that a, that a Zaya locked uh, like league could be a lot of fun nowadays. Yeah. But absolutely. We'll have to see what Varlamore brings. Um, because God, it's gonna be. I'm so excited for that new <laughs> continent, dude. That's I soon, though, wait. right? Like next couple months, dude. They said did early you, 2024. Did you see today? The Winter Summit is coming back. Really? 
January twentieth, dude. In two what? weeks, they're doing another winter summit. Oh, Michael yeah. and I just got done talking. Um, Michael and I just got done talking about how they're probably not gonna do a winter summit because of like the time frame for things. Yeah. It, it God, I'm so excited. It's gonna Heck be yeah. so good. We're gonna hear about so much cool stuff. We I'm should. Excited. Uh, we should do like a. I don't know if I'm gonna include this in the episode. So. Here's the break. That's how editing Oxy, Oxy. That's how Listen. editing Oxy knows. He looks at the track and he goes, "Is there a break there?" Yeah, there is because there's a pause. So, <laughs> I I think we should do. I don't know if we do like a live stream or we just like hang out in Discord. Uh, there's only two updates left on the current timeline, which is probably what Varlamore and what else? Oh, mid level PVM. Yeah, the fucking. Yeah, the, I know what you mean. The the rat boss. Rat boss. The we'll rat probably boss see rat boss. In that, that thing where you're going to get a cape upgrade or something. That's all Varlamore. It's all it's Varlamore. Varlamore. Yeah. Um, no, the, it's the, um, it's like the catacomb. It's like the Forthos dungeon meets Barrows. That's in Varlamore. I, yeah, it's all Varlamore, I'm pretty sure. Um, I will, I, this is the last time. It's not the last time I'm going to say it. AKD required. Stop. <laughs> it narratively no makes the most sense. It doesn't matter. Narratively, it makes the most sense. The AKD so is a requirement to go to this continent. It's it's such a wild, wild concept that like, oh, we don't let anybody in, but we're gonna let you in, and then later you're just witness. You're witnessing an assassination of a freshly coronated king with a Varlamore dagger. And then there's just, you've already been there. There's no intrigue of why you need to go to Varlamore. You're just there. You're just a guy. That's such bad writing. That's like D&D Season 8 Game of Thrones writing. Please, please, Ed, make AKD a requirement. I beg you. Please, I beg you. <laughs> What what are we pausing this this section for? Uh, we may have already come back. I don't remember. I'm just talking about like maybe doing a live stream for the whatever. Um, I don't know. <sighs> How do you feel about these? What's your final point total, Michael? Forty two k on the dot. I'm forty two thousand eighty. I am not a point more. Not a point. I may get forty two hundred at the last second, so I have more than Oxy, but that's still yet to be seen. Because all I, I need you. is an arm atop. And I, I got it. The only thing that could maybe make me play leagues is if somebody wants to do like Tob at the close, you know? Mm. But at this point, if you're listening to this episode, leagues unlikely. is over. So Yeah, it's unlikely it happened. I'm I'm content. I'm that's I'm I'm genuinely content. Like yeah. you I got to my point threshold. I did all the content that I wanted to do. I couldn't do a single more i couldn't do another sire you can't make me i'm not gonna do any more sire than 33 that's all i can handle like that was gonna be my last task to get to 42k and i decided to go to krill <laughs> for the staff of the dead that's how i ended it i was gonna get 50 sire and i'm like this is this is literal hell i can't do this anymore because yeah if you've if you've ever killed sire without shadow or or smoke or whatever Spell the one who was trying to tell me it's not that bad because it's leagues, and I told you, I'm like, dude, it's the sire is stinky. You're like, no, it's bad. The sire, I never want to do it. So I was using the Arceus spellbook, like the Demon Bane spell from the Arceus spellbook, to try and damage him. I don't know. That's that's the best thing I could have come up with, Um, and you have to do a certain amount of damage. So then every time you're trying to do the damage, he's sending out um, scions and he's spawning the, the poison under your feet for like a good 30 seconds before you, you stun him and then you stun him and then you only have time to kill two of the respiratory systems and you have to stun him again. So like the lead up to actually killing Sire in the 40 seconds that it takes is like a three or four minute task to do. And so Getting to 50 kills is like three hours. It's not fun. <sighs> and I don't really care about anything from the from the pool. I mean, I got a dry, I got a um, 
uh, Abyssal Dagger, which I used as like my strength weapon and my spec weapon instead of a Dragon Dagger, which was kind of nice. But no, I'm content. I am done with leagues. We're back on the main game. Um, goals are full force going very well. And I look forward to the next league. I, I really do. I genuinely do. I don't think that there will be a, a another sentiment again where I'm like, yeah, I could play this league or I could not. I'm going to be maxing or I'm going to be doing. Like, I, so I we got him hooked? Leagues. Is that what I'm, I'm hearing? We got him hooked? hooked? I am. Mission accomplished, boys. We've, we've done it. I, I'm so proud of you, Michael, for not burning out and not giving me this, oh, well, I've been making this progress on my actual Iron Man. You did so good getting the f***ing tier 8 and doing top. The only thing I wish you would have done is do the Inferno. The only thing I wish you would have done is step into the Inferno, just because who cares, right? Um, I guess I'll have to do it in the main game. It's marginally hypocritical, because I also did not step into the Inferno. <laughs> I did not. Dude, I did not Oxy, care. I, mm. I did triple jazz. Like I you think did your that triple jazz, was my which inferno. I am I am quite I'm quite pleased with. Rune Halberd's Rune Halberd, baby, <laughs> it is stinky. I think you should go back into leagues and do it again with a ranged weapon, just maybe. for laughs. Yeah, maybe because uh, until just you come see. back, until we are in a space together where you can use my account to do triple jads, um, you're not gonna see them until you get there. And let me tell you, it sucks to spend two hours to get clapped by Jad. Um, at the yeah. very end, it's not fun. Yeah. Like it sucks to get clapped by Zuck. Don't get me wrong, but it sucks to like you know how to do Jad and you die to Jad. Ugh, yeah. it feels so it feels so shitty. It <sighs> feels so shitty in the Inferno to die to Jad. But but alas, leagues is done. It was a wonderful time. I think Michael from two months ago. Would not believe that I'm sitting here with a Oxy from two months ago. Would not have believed you're sitting there. Yeah, neither of us. <laughs> if you had told me, Michael, you're going to end the league with an exact rune cup. You're going to have 19 Tob KC. You're going to have gotten a purple from Tob, and you were 2200 total. That's I, I feel accomplished. I didn't max, which was kind of one one slight regret because I was I was. I was I was there. Like I could have done it, but like agility and thieving were just my two holdbacks. You've already maxed, huh? That's what you've already maxed. I've already yeah. got an infernal cape. It doesn't matter. Yeah, <laughs> it's if you're going for the points, sure. But like, there's we got nothing to prove by doing it in leagues, right? Um, Maxing wouldn't have got me dragon cup, and that was that would be the only thing I think. If I needed the points to go for dragon, then I would have maxed, and I would have done a lot more raids because mm -hmm. there was a lot of points that I didn't take advantage of with raids. I had two of them. And I didn't get a single purple from, like, I got a Dex and I got Justy Legs. Those Justy only Legs, two baby. The trusty Justy the Legs. <laughs> trusty I was Justy. so hoping that was going to be a scythe. I don't know how bad. You don't understand how badly I wanted that purple of yours at Tob to I be know. literally anything but just this year. I was like, please, if this, is a, nice. if this is a scythe, it's going to change Michael's life. I don't think yeah. I'll be able to get him out of the theater because the scythe <laughs> is going to be, he's going to be like quivering. He's going to love it so much. It's oh, so man. much fun. The, the two tick the mega last. weapons, that was a great change they made also. Taking five tick down to two tick. Yeah. Bless. Bless up with the two tick scythe. That was so fun. Sweet. But I, I will say I'm also I'm also quite content with yeah. uh, with leagues four. I got a third rune cup to match my other rune cups. The only holdback I have is I have ten thousand leagues points. The bulwark ornament kit costs ten k. The blowpipe costs six k. I think I might buy the blowpipe kit because I don't even own a bulwark, and I'll use it later. Uh, I'll just yeah. buy it later. This has been an extraordinary league. Uh, overall, so much better than Shattered Relics. It captured all the best parts of the first Trailblazer League, and it made all the necessary improvements from the last three leagues to make what is truly, I think, the best temporary game mode experience we have seen maybe ever. Like, I think people might have personal sentiments towards different leagues, like we talked about with We Skill Now. Um, mm -hmm. But I think objectively, Reloaded has been the best. There was the issues were minimal and they were fixed very quickly. And I think because they were fixed quickly and minimal, um, we will 
we will see a, a, an even better leagues five. I'm hoping when that happens. Um, yeah, I think it's a good time to to put a bow on to put a bow on leagues to log out for the last time and <laughs> drop your shit on the Edgeville table and, and say goodbye to leagues four, baby. Sayonara. Sayonara. It's a great place to end this part of the episode, I would say. That's going to do it for this first half, folks. Bye-bye, leagues. <laughs> and hello, 2024 goals. Hello, all new content. Like, there's just so much more. Hello, and, shooting um, stars. I think, oh, shooting stars. I think we're back on a good cycle now, too, to where there's not going to be any other content that interrupts or delays a league. So we should be back on a yearly cycle, which I'm excited about. Fingers crossed. All right, guys, stick around because we're going to have a lot more content to talk about after this little commercial break. And uh, I hope to see you there. Hello, hello. Allow me to introduce myself. My name is Simon Templeton, owner, operator, sole proprietor, and chief executive officer of Simon Templeton's Totally Legitimate Archaeological Expeditions. You've actually caught me out here at an interesting time. I'm doing work for the Varrock Museum, and as a matter of fact, you've come by at just the right time. You see that pyramid? At the top rests a smaller, shinier pyramid. It's not a very tough trek up, but you see, that's my problem. Last time I tried to go up there, I really hurt my back on the way down, so I haven't been feeling up to the climb lately. But that's where you come in. You see, I've got a guy. He's willing to pay top dollar for those pyramid tops. So I'll make you a deal. For every pyramid top you get me, I'll toss you 10,000 gold. That's right, that's a one with one, two, three, four zeros at the end of it. No diminishing returns, just cold hard cash. So what do you think? We got a deal? That yep, wait, don't answer that. Just meet me here at my base camp outside the pyramid tomorrow morning. If you get lost on your way over, the pyramid is right next to the edge of the world. Literally, there's nothing there. You stare at the void, the void stares back. I'll see you bright and early tomorrow morning. Can't wait to do business with you, partner. Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed that commercial break because I know that I sure did. Right now is the time in which we are going to take a moment and thank the people who make all of this possible, uh, the folks that subscribe on our Patreon. So this episode is, this part of the episode is dedicated to you. Uh, if you are part of the Wise Old Man tier, uh, you get a special shout out uh, on the first time that you subscribe. And currently, we don't have any new Wise Old Man patrons, which is fine. But we get to say thank you to all of our current Wise Old Man patrons who are on the screen now. Thank you to each and every one of you. You guys are the bread and butter of our, of our, of our subscription tiers. Um, one of the coolest things you get as a Wise Old Man patron is access to the recording booth chat. That's where you can hang out with us live while we do these episodes. You can see kind of the behind the scenes stuff that happens. You can hear about new things that Oxy and I are planning even before everybody else. Um, we call it the, uh, the old Patreon NDA that you have to sign. There's no, there's no actual NDA, but you get to hear like when we have a break, you can hear what we're going to, you know, hear the stuff we talk about. Anyway, recording booth is awesome. Um, I love all the people that hang out with us in the recording booth. And that is one of the best tiers to, uh, to have for the recording booth. Another tier we don't talk about often is the Party Pete tier. And that tier is where you get access to the monthly Patreon streams that we're doing. Um, so every month on the third Friday of that month, we're going to do a live stream on YouTube specifically for our patrons. So if you're part of the Party Pete tier, Wise Man or KBD, you can show up and hang out. And the cool thing is, is if you miss the stream, uh, it is there for you in the archives. So you'll be able to catch it later. It's, a, it's, it's essentially a recorded video. 
So if you subscribe to the Wise Old Man, Party Peter, KBD tier today, you'll be able to go back and watch the past live streams that we have from November and December, respectively. So that's another cool tier that we didn't talk about very often. Um, but the tier that we talk about a lot and that deserves all of the praise is the KBD tier. Those are the folks I'm going to shout out right now. Um, we give a, a personal and a specific shout out to each and every person in the KBD tier every single episode. And this episode is no different. So starting us off, we have Professor Slayer, Apathy, a.k.a. German Cat Guy, Boston Sport 5, Broke 70, Oxy's Dad, My Dad, All of Our Dad, Hi Dad, Clapscape, Cloud Kicker, Damon S, Dicky Bird, Elite Oreo Dunker, XP Enjoyer, Fire Thread, Gumby, HMZ Bot, Mark aka iStream, MT Birchfield, our third favorite Patreon supporter, Ralph, Rylithian, SatanBot666, he's back everyone, <laughs> Soggy came. Waffles, <laughs> Soggy Waffles, Seppy J, Seth Shep, Sparky Life, 93, Swole Beans and Gravy, The Big G Geordie, and The Crayola Tally Morn. Thank you so much to everyone. If you are in the KBD tier, you know who you are. We just said your name. Thank you so much. Um, smoochos, smoochos to all of you. If you'd like to join these, these fine folks, uh, potentially get your name shouted out, uh, you can do so at patreon.com forward slash XP waste. We have tiers ranging from $1 all the way to twi- uh, $25. So pick your fancy. You can also join for free, which if we're being honest, nobody really knows what that means yet. Cause Oxy and I have not really, <laughs> we don't even sat know down what that to, shit means. <laughs> we really sat down to figure that out. So eh, you can join for free. We have people joining for free all the time and you know, maybe we'll post feet pics or something for you guys who joined for free. For free? Yeah. Not for free. For free. Just like not one toe. Free. Get a single toe. Not for free. Uh-uh. Not for free. I'm posting a oh. dollar sign over my feet. Like, uh, if I ever, oh. my foot ever ends up on Twitter, uh-uh. Not for free. Oh, interesting. Not for free. Anyway, that's going to do it for Patreon. Um, now, it is time to go and read our community question responses. Way, Before note, we read the community question responses, you have a side note. Hit me with a side note first. Side note, if, if I'm talking a little low, it's not because I'm trying to hit you with the ASMR. My son is sleeping in the room next to me, and I don't want to wake him up. And I get a text at least twice an episode from my wife. She's like, you're talking really loud. I'm like, ah, I, have to, I have to really be mindful about that. Baby, lock the anyway. doors and turn the pot <laughs> down low. Uh <laughs> Before we get into the community question, what is your New Year's resolution? Personally? Yes. Do you have one? Are you a resolution guy? Oh, I'm not really a resolution guy. Um, every year, it's always like, I want to eat healthy. I want to get fit. But like, I watched a video recently that was like the, the, the calendar that we follow is not based on like actual cycles that humans go through so like the actual new year is supposed to be what our spring is so like you're coming out of like what the start of spring is supposed to be the new year so like you're coming out of winter everything is anew plants are coming back trees are turning green flowers are sprouting that's supposed to be the new year and so that sounds like holistic talk so I've ever heard it. Whenever it's like the dead of winter and everybody's depressed, you're expected to have a New Year's resolution. So I don't know. For me, if I'm going to do anything, it's going. I'm I'm not going to start it January first. I'm going to take 2024 and I'm just going to work on things slowly, and not try and shove it all into the first week of January to to like set myself up for failure. But I think one thing that I am going to focus on in this year is playing games less. Um, I know I'm addicted, and that's a problem, and I need a healthier relationship with video games, especially for my son, who is now becoming an age where he can, he notices 
if I'm on the if I'm on my phone or I'm on my computer and I want to be more present for him. And so mm-hmm. that comes with a bit of a sacrifice in um, my own gaming habits. And it, with, with not playing games as much, I definitely want to invest more time into things that are like other hobbies. Like I've had a 3D printer for two years now, and I haven't printed a single thing in, in months. Um, and the things that I have printed have sat unfinished. I have a stack of it, of every single rune in RuneScape left unfinished because I, if I, if I, in, in, my, in my mind, if I can sit down to paint them, that's time I could be playing RuneScape. So I want to shift my focus a bit this year and spend less time gaming and more time doing other things, hobbies, going out, watching movies, um, developing a skill, learning a language, all that kind of stuff. So that's my New Year's, New Year's resolution. Do you have one? Uh, kind of. I don't love sticking with New Year's resolutions because sometimes I feel like it puts a lot of pressure on you to do something you're not entirely used to uh, with resolutions. Um, but I do think they can be beneficial. Like, from a natural standpoint, like as far as nature is concerned, yes, spring makes more sense. But I also think having the motivation to like do something in the dead of winter when you're depressed and it's dark and there's nothing to do, like having like, no, I said for my New Year's resolution I was going to do this. It can be helpful to have a tangible goal in front of you. Um, that said, I think I, I probably have two. Um, the more the more like tangible one that is less out in the ether. I, I want to get back into some sort of shape. We were talking about it last night. We had a pretty like real semi drunk. I was semi drunk. Everyone else was pretty drunk. Uh, conversation about like what body dysmorphia is. Cause like mm. some of our friends are fucking jacked, like statue of David, like ripped. And they're talking about the self perception of like, I know it's just me but I still feel like I don't look good and I'm overweight. And I said, like, I have a word for that in my industry. Do you want to know what it is? And the, like, we already know what the word is, right? It's dysmorphia. That's, that's what yeah. it is. I would like to get into a better shape for lots of reasons. I, I want to feel like I look good and actually understand that I look good. Cause there are photos of me when I was like, I think right now I'm sitting pretty at like three fifteen. You know, 411 and 315 is quite the look, let me tell you. Um, I remember thinking back when I was in college. And when I was a senior in college, um, I went to Michigan State for undergrad. That campus is fucking huge. It was a six mile round trip to walk from my apartment to the Breslin Center for basketball games and back. I walked probably a good three to five miles a day. There was one day, I swear to God, there was one day my best friend Owen came up and we played Pokemon Go. We like bought, like we spent money on the game for the first time like ever. We bought like adventure and kits. We walked 22 miles around Michigan State's campus playing Pokemon Go. So in addition to like having to walk everywhere, because MSU did this really cool thing where if you said the word parking as a student, you got a ticket. You couldn't fucking drive anywhere on campus. <laughs> Between that and like I was saber fencing four days a week mm-hmm. with like actual structured coaches. Like a bit, I don't have a large saber contingent at my current club. When it's me and one other sixteen-year-old, I can't work on drills and mass like I could. So. Between like being a very, very active athlete, walking all the time, and having an absolute like, I was so, I was in it for Whole Foods. I lived down the street from a Whole Foods, dude. I was eating like a king over yeah. there. I had a fantastic diet. I look back at photos and was like, damn, I was hot back then. And I felt like shit. The whole mm. time, I'm like, oh my god, I'm just like, why am I like, I'm so much bigger than all of my friends? It's because yeah, I'm dude. like gigantic. It's, like, I would like oh. to get back to 
I, I ideally, if I can go from 315 to 250 over the year, I will be very pleased with that because now I have an understanding of like, I'm not, I've, I've known since I was like 19, I'm not going to have a very ripped body. It's not how my body has ever looked. I, I literally, I was flabby when I had like a three foot vertical at 19 years old. Like mm-hmm. I could, I, I was playing ball three hours a day, six days a week. And I still like had a gut, right? I've never been super buff, but I think a physical goal, especially after the injury and realizing what life is like when I work out constantly and then do nothing like, yeah, yeah, it's, it's stinky. So I want to get back to like, I don't know how that's going to look. It's probably going to be very like class directed. Um, because I don't like going to the gym by myself. I need someone to push me. I need a team sport. I need a coach. I need something to get me to work out. Um, and the less tangible one, I got to be more direct with people. What like mainly in like the romantic sense, if that makes sense. If we're trying to not be single for the entirety of 2024, I have to actually talk to human beings that's probably my biggest like michael was talking to me when he came up for i think it was xp waste north you're having this conversation with me and you're like just talk to guys talk to girls i'm like no i don't think i will he's like how are you gonna find i'm like figure it out (laughs) so i think that's another it's far less tangible of like what the results of that are going to look like um but i have to be like less of a bitch and actually have conversations with people who I'm like, there could be something there, uh, which is a lot of mental things I would probably need to overcome, um, which is an entire episode in and of itself. That is not going to be another whole podcast. Boy, it could be another podcast. You're going to be paying me by the hour if we're doing that kind of podcast. So I tell you what, um, (laughs) but yeah, uh, those are my two new year's resolutions. Um, on it's top of maxing my RuneScape, account. good stuff. So we're both going to play less, less RuneScape. So I'm trying to max. Go I feel like I am going to. <laughs> I'm going to be playing a lot of RuneScape. But you but said I'm... you don't want to play RuneScape and play RuneScape at the same time. I mean, once you get mining done, you'll be on it. You'll I just, I don't want to play RuneScape right now because I'm mining. That's why I don't want to play RuneScape. Sure. <laughs> but like, you know, I think when I get close, when I can smell the max cape, it's going to be gross. I'm going to be blacked out screen at Herbivore uh, going for the Max Cape. That's, <laughs> but. Well, speaking of New Year's resolutions, that's what we asked Let's you. Yeah, let's get into it. Let's talk that's about That's what this. we asked you guys. Yeah. So the uh, community question for this week is, what is your IRL New Year's resolutions? And if you're watching the YouTube video and all you can see is white squares on my glasses, I knew I know. you were going to hate that. I, knew, I didn't say anything because I knew you were going to hate it. <laughs> They're new glasses, and I, I, I need to wear them because uh, TLDR, I have double vision to where if I'm looking at an object, my eyes strain harder than they should to keep that object in a singular, uh, where, where, where both of my eyes are focusing on it at the same time. And so it's minuscule how much effort I need to put in to look at things in a single image, but over the course of the day, if I'm if I'm doing a lot of stuff, um, it's a lot of strain, and I have I have headaches all the time. So my glasses can help me see things without putting any strain on my eyes. So I'm wearing them all the time now, and I got the blue light, like anti-reflective blue light filtering. And I'll, <laughs> right now, if you're watching the YouTube video, it's literally just white squares. Because it's reflecting what's on my screen. <laughs> anyway, As you say, it doesn't seem to be aside, working too well. But a tangent aside, we asked you guys, "What's your New Year's resolution?" And we're going to start out with real crazy. They say, "I want to add something new to my everyday life." Days have been way too similar for the last few years, and it's felt like I've been on an IRL grind with only 10k XP per hour, a 99 Dude. IRL grind. Sorry, dog. 99 IRL. 10k xp per hour i know we're not trying to take this make this last forever real crazy find literally any hobby in real life i was doing the exact same thing 
in fall of 22 before i joined my fencing team i was eroding it was wake up bitch about being up early go to work come home play runescape go to bed later than i should wake up bitch about being up early do any join any hobby you can find gets you out of the house do it yeah yeah absolutely absolutely good good suggestions oxy uh next up d rabbit 17 says uh they want to sleep better as like oxy they are not a morning person i'm a morning it's person tough. and a night person it's, it's a weird tough, thing dog. it's tough <laughs> otis says i saw a hashtag around christmas hashtag too blessed to be stressed and i know that was going to be my resolution life will have stress but don't stress over the small stuff cheers and happy new year's that's amazing, Otis. I love that, dude. I love that. Dinosaur says, I proposed my GF way back in 2018. Put it off. COVID happened. Quarantine, etc., 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 etc. We're putting a hard deadline to it finally, and we are for sure getting married this year. That's exciting. Hell yeah, brother. Congratulations. Um, Lake says, to listen to more XP waste. The only resolution you need, baby. Honestly, the only out. resolution you need. <laughs> We're gonna keep making episodes. So we've you got have, like it's an. I easy... wonder how many days of content we have. Like, if you tallied up all our episodes, I wonder how many days straight through it is. Um, a lot. So we have like 137 episodes. I would say we're an average of like two, two hours, hours per episode. episode. So that's, like ten days or something. That's like yeah, it's over ten days of content. Wow, that's at cool. least <laughs> that's neat. So you have a lot of you have a lot of uh, content to make that happen, if that's your resolution. Uh, Vest Polar says to run a half marathon. Ooh, that's really neat. So uh, a marathon is how many? It's like twenty two miles or something. Twenty four. It's a lot. A half marathon. Thirteen. A half is like no. It's twenty six. A marathon is twenty six. Half marathon. Yeah, half marathon is like thirteen point. Not that I know much about running marathons. Let me tell you. <laughs> I want to run a five k. I'm gonna do the turkey trot, five k in at the end of this year, and I want to run the whole thing. I don't want to stop. Fen says, "Eat more veggies." With a, I don't know if that's a sad face or like a content face emoji. I'm gonna take it as a sad face because they don't like veggies, but veggies are good. You can get smoothies with veggies and uh fruit and that's a good way to start you want my secret to eating more vegetables mexican asparagus oh mexican food okay i'm telling you right now peppers i thought you were gonna say peas or something beans like if you want more vegetable nutrients fajitas tacos burritos put it all in one big old thing and just eat it with a meat that you really like i'm telling you that's a that is the best way for me that i found to increase vegetable intake because you can nice. load that bitch up with fajita vegetables, and it doesn't seem like a lot. So, get her done. Stir fry tiki says also a good shout. Stir fry is good. Cook them. Just cook your vegetables. Like eating raw vegetables is never really going to be sustainable. Uh, OC Dam says get my achievement diary cape. And Oxy Voidbreaker tile was only fun because y'all got it in a reasonable time. The mumby's doing the twenty four hours of Le Mans. 11 hours of Callisto was definitely not fun. We killed Callisto 4,300 times. We were at that boss for four straight days, and we as a team lost probably 350 mil worth of gear, (laughs) including my high Mm. risk uh, folly when I went to Anna Carl and lost 80 mil worth of shit, or whatever it was, or 30 mil, whatever it was. We did not get it in a reasonable amount of time. We kind of got spooned at Vedion, and we did. I don't. I would have to pull up the numbers, but Vedion, we got lucky. Callisto, we did not. We mm. killed four thousand plus Callisto. So I don't know if that it was came easy for C four, <laughs> but it wasn't easy. Uh, Zeno says participate in as many HMZ as it will take to green log that beautiful content. Maybe also finish CG. What is HMZ? Finish CG first, dog. Hard mode Zalcano. Hard mode Zalcano? Yeah, you bring like skis and shit. You just oh like tank God. the floor. Like it it's Zalcano, but stupid. That's what hard mode Zalcano is. Is this it's, something you made up? 
No, dude, that's a that's a Zeno creation right there. It's a it's a oh, raids okay. bank first, uh, <laughs> coined by our our buddy Zeno, the HMZ bot. Uh, gotcha. It's just I've done so much Zolcano that I have to make it interesting by doing the dumbest shit possible to make it more difficult. <laughs> that is that's HMZ. Okay. <laughs> okay. Nice. Well, good luck with the HMZ. And finally on Spotify, Moistron says, I started going to the gym in 2023. I want to continue that progress I made in weight loss. I also want to get into reading more books in my free time instead of just playing video games. Here, here, brother. Here, here. I'm going to start building puzzles in my free time more. I don't know That's about cool. reading. I feel like I'd love to be the guy that reads because uh, that's hot to me, but I cannot, I do not have the attention span to read. I'm a, I'm like, a, I'm basically a 27 year old version of an iPad kid. <laughs> reading is hard. I don't know how to read. Oh my gosh. Uh, audiobooks. Anyway, moving over to our YouTube replies, we only have one where we ask the same question What is your IRL New Year's resolution? And Jordy says, I have too many. Dot, my dot, dot. man if there's one thing that is always <laughs> certain it is that our man jordy from day one will comment on youtube videos i love him so much keeps the youtube alive he um, really he says, does god bless you jordy <laughs> but mainly to be more caring and loving towards myself i have neglected myself for far too long and runescape wise Make a conscious decision between starting over on an iron or rebuild my main after I got robbed mid bingo as long as I have fun with it. Nice. Those oh, are two man. goals. Like start an Iron Man and love yourself more. That's a good New Year's resolution right there. Really contradictory. As a therapist, I gotta love it with you. It's really hard. I would say you're sure. gonna find they're gonna clash quite a bit. You're really trying to love yourself and also starting an Iron Man. Love yourself and love the drops you get. That's my, <laughs> I, I would say maybe start a group Iron Man with some people that you trust. That's going to do it for this community question, folks. Thank you so much to everyone who did answer. If you want to answer this good question, it will be, what is your like prediction for the next league? Are we going to have Trailblazer 3, Twisted League 2? Who knows? Maybe a new continent, like I said. We could see. We'll definitely see. But we want to know what your predictions are. You can answer that question in the community question section on Spotify or the pinned comment of this YouTube video. I'm going to throw it over to my handsomest, most unorganized in his bedroom co-host we've ever had, Oxy, for I Achievement of the Week. actually went furniture shopping, and I think I know what I'm going to get furniture-wise. So within the next couple of months, you're going to see a background change because I'm definitely moving to the other room. So it's not going to be as disheveled as it is right now. I'm also, again, in shambles entirely. Like if you guys could see what was behind me, it's like laundry and shit. Like it's very like I got to get my life together in my room. Clean room, clean mind. And I have been foggy brained all weekend because I've been surprisingly busy. But that's neither here nor there. Um it's Achievement of the Week time. And this is one of those weeks where I had to go through levels and achievements again to make sure I actually did Achievement of the Week correctly because we have like a record low amount of achievements, mm. which is not a bad Burnout. thing. Burnout. I think it's, yeah, it's actually, it's pretty healthy because number one, we're coming into the new year and it's been a holiday and people have been doing a lot. Some of you are off from school. Some of you are back to work, you know, whatever. Um, but I think from when I see a lack of achievements, it tells me that you guys are doing other things. Mm. You guys are either working on something long-term in RuneScape, like 99 mining, or you're playing a different game. And I cannot stress enough the importance of playing other video games while playing this game. I, mm -hmm. again, I got two of these bitches. I'm here forever. But playing other games is so helpful for motivation in RuneScape. That said, Achievement of the Week is slim pickings. Um, for the first time ever, we have one, one combat achievement. Oh my goodness. Only one person has achieved something in combat this week. And it is insane to me both the achievement itself because i don't have this achievement done 
and the fact that we only have one, it is it's absurd to me. So shout out to the old J for achieving blood torva. I was on last night when he got it. I saw the collection log pop up. The old it was the first, so he got the an awakener orb with it. So it's like a little slap in the face. He killed his last boss and he got an awakener orb to do it again. Um, but I saw the awakeners orb and I, my initial thought was like ball. And then it was like the old Jay has received an item, ancient blood ornament kit. I'm like, oh <laughs> shit, he's got blood torva. That's awesome. Um, that's our only combat achievement is blood torva. Hmm. That's our own. No fire capes, no Zalra, nothing. It's only blood torva. Likewise, we only have one miscellaneous achievement, and that is Satanbot 666 completed Desert Treasure 2 and got his first quest cape. Oh, hell I, yeah. Or it was either Desert Treasure 2 or, or Dragon Slayer 2. It was one of the sequels. I think it was Desert Treasure. Um, but he got his first quest cape, and he's the only one. You, you both stand alone in your respective categories this week. <laughs> uh, and I'm very proud of you guys for that because they're. They're both equally difficult achievements for where you guys are at in your account. Yes, objectively, Blorva is harder than a quest cape, but when you are at the point where a quest cape is hard, quest cape is hard. The quests are not, the quests are hard. Dude, I ever told you my, I ever told you a story about when I was going for my quest cape, what happened in Monkey Madness 2? No. So I did Monkey Madness 2 a week after the death update. Do you remember the death update when they introduced yeah. gravestones? Yeah. I did it a week after, and had I done it a week prior, I would have lost everything. Oh, It would have been like a complete wipe, because back then, you didn't have a gravestone in instances, so if you died, you just lost all your shit. And I had never seen a demonic gorilla before. Like, I read about them on the wiki, but I did not know how they worked, and I did not know how to fight them. I got my ass beat. Because my dumbass killed both the tortured gorillas. I was like, I'm invincible. What are you going to do? And then both demonic gorillas jumped down, and it was over. I was like, oh, oh, oh. I tried to let Neve kill him. I died. And I was streaming, and I like had to take a second. And I was like, you guys, had the death update not come out last week, I would have lost everything. I think I brought like mage and range with me. Because I thought, like, oh, those are my two strongest, surely. It's wow. a bad choice. Don't bring mage to demonic gorillas unless you have a shadow. Um, but I would have lost arms. I would have lost my brand new trident of the swamp. I would have lost my blowpipe. I would have lost everything. Oh, so no. like at that time, I would have gone from like a seven mil bank to like a two hundred k bank, and it was so scary uh, <laughs> to to do. So quest cape is hard when you're at that point. Proud of both of you, but needless to say. We do have more in skilling, but not many more. So, kicking off the skilling category, Fumble Swing achieved 99 defense. Bus Go Beep achieved 99 rune crafting, thus completing the big three for the max and grind. Jay Goose achieved 99 HP. Suffix Isaac achieved 99 herblore. Paul Mohadib, the dune enjoyer himself, achieved 99 smithing. Raymer also achieved 99 hit points. The Felty Fox achieved 99 strength. And while recording this episode, Forsaken 5 or Forsaken V, our boy Forsaken, achieved 99 thieving. We also have two total levels. Good Friends, Jaw Dead, and Boston Sport both got 2k total on the same tick last night. And that was Hell pretty yeah. cool. Saw to see that pop up in the CC. And that is Achievement of the Week. If you can believe wow. it, I know I had to pad it out by telling a story, but truly, there's it, not much that's going it. on. You guys are taking healthy breaks, and I'm, that's the biggest achievement of them all, that you guys are taking <laughs> breaks, and I know it'll come back, especially with the winter summit around the corner. Something's going to happen. Just like when, uh, like, remember the week before Desert Treasure 2 came out, and we had like 13 quest capes or whatever it was, mm -hmm. or the week after it came out? Like, yeah. people were going nuts when there's yeah. a big update that comes out, so... Yeah, keep up the good work, you guys. If you want to talk about your achievements, whatever they may be, whether it's a quest cape, whether it's Blood Torva, whether it's any 99, or whether it's like, hey, I got to magic trees for the first time, and I thought magic trees were so cool as a kid, and I couldn't cut them until right now, post about it. Because a lot of achievements that like we don't shout out, for example, people still react to, and they still think are cool. Like One thing we don't ever shout out is post-quest boss kills. 
things that you engage with in a quest, like Vorkath is a big one. Like, I think D Rabbit got their first Vorkath kill. Hell yeah, dog. We don't shout that out because you have to kill Vorkath to complete the quest. Mm-hmm. But doing it for the first time afterwards, that's like your introduction to like doing bigger content. Done it. Yeah. Right. Um, post about that. We want to see it. Skilling, miscellaneous combat. We don't care. We want to see the cool stuff you guys are doing. If you want to post about that and spend time in objectively the best RuneScape Discord in the world, I've said it once, I'll say it again. Um, we are we are the place to be. That's discord.gg forward slash OSRSTNL. I, I do it every week. I scroll down when I say this. Sure enough, the VCs are going up. The rating VCs, the bossing VCs. People are doing all sorts of content. Come hang out. Come join the community. Um, we would love to have you. Michael, my friend, it is time. Do you have a question that some may call fun for us today? I don't, actually. I oh. was hoping that you would. Hoping that I would? Yeah. I want, I want a fun question off the top of your head. A fun question? You've been doing this for two and a half years. A fun question? Uh, That's the problem. We've been doing it for two and a half years. We've asked (laughs) quite a few fun questions. Here's a a question that may not be fun. Is it time to retire the fun question section? Is it time to think of something to fill this space? Are we beating a dead horse? I don't know. Sound off. Because every time I get to this point in the episode, it's stressful. And I'm like, is there something to talk about? Is there a fun question? What if it's not fun? So I don't know. I think the bit, the beauty of the fun question at this point, it allows people to interact and ask us dumb shit. And if there's one thing we love on the show, it's dumb shit. Um, I think it adds a very unique piece of who we are in the show that we talk mm-hmm. about. Like we'll have good discussions. We'll have informative episodes. We'll have heated arguments. And then at the end of the day, who do you think you could beat in a fight? <laughs> right. Yeah. Like one thousand uh chicken sized jads or one jad sized chicken? Like who do you think would win? <laughs> the answer is neither. You lose both of those fights. Because a jad sized <laughs> chicken is essentially a Tyrannosaurus Rex, and fighting a thousand of anything, you're destined to lose. It's a numbers game. You're not gonna you're not gonna uh, beat that. Um That said, Michael. Fun question for you. Yes. Given what you're wearing right now, you get teleported to an arena. I saw this question on TikTok. You get teleported to an arena, right? And it's just the clothes on your back. Every minute, a RuneScape goblin spawns in front of you. And you have 60 seconds to immobilize or kill this goblin, right? Okay. If you do it within five seconds, you get a 55 second break and then another goblin spawns. If it takes you longer than a minute, now you have two goblins to deal with, right? (laughs) Okay. How many goblins do you think you could immobilize before you get taken down? Just the stuff on my back. So no weapons? Equate, no, no weapons, like equate. Like, do the goblins have weapons? Can I pick up no. their weapons? Equate in a goblin to like what is essentially it, the TikTok question said a, a 13 ver, 13 year old version of you. So equate a goblin to like what you were like at 13 years old. I haven't changed. Like, I, I hit puberty and I just haven't changed. Like, I'm the same height, I'm pretty much the same weight. So it would be like 13 <laughs> me's. No, I'm I'm much heavier. That was just <laughs> say goddamn. <laughs> I think I was like 180 when I was th- 170 at 13. It's same. So, um I don't know. 13-year-old me is much more fit, unfortunately. So maybe I would not be able to survive that long. If it was a goblin. Okay, so if it's my RuneScape character and I'm in graceful. It's you. It's me. Okay, it's me. It's just you. Um, you get transport I glasses, last, headset at all. How, how many goblins do you like think you can take now? Two hours. Two hours? That's 120 goblins. No. Yeah, it's 120 goblins. Yeah, you need 120 goblins? Because I think at that point, you're going off of, it would be taken down by exhaustion. Because at some point, like an hour and a half in, 
they're going to start stacking up maybe an hour. Like it would be an hour and then they're going to start stacking up. And then it's going to be like, I'm fighting like 10 goblins towards the end. And like, like you said, at that point, it's just a numbers game. I think, I think my stamina can last me for two hours and then I'm dead. I think I could get some pretty good breaks in. I, I would probably put the ballpark at like a hundred. And I think I'm probably 100 overestimating a hundred goblins. Yeah. Um, because I, I say that because my first instinct, like if I'm thinking about 13 year old me as one of these goblins, right? From the TikTok question. All I have to do is like insult 13 year old me. I'm down for the count. <laughs> if I kick 13 year old me in the nuts, it's over. A good bop to the stomach. 13 year old me is not getting up. But they're fighting Even like you a firm too. slap across the face. I think I could immobilize goblins via the. You don't have to like execute them. Immobilize oh, like them so they're, slap, so they're not getting snaps. getting back. I mean, you can if you want to. It just seems like my go to tactic is is the nut kick. They just mm. like just like well, bam, a good front kick to the to the stomach or the balls. If you can, get I them think shoulder on the ground wrestling style is that immobilized. Like if you could just wrestle them enough. You know what? For for the sake of this fun question, if the referee can go one, two, three, then they're down. They're out. Okay, they just cool. like disappear. Cool. Right? Then I can go I, way more than two hours. I think I could get at least a hundred goblins down if I had to fight them just like bare hands, right? Nice. And like this is also assuming like the goblins have no weapons, they have no armor, so you're not like punching metal armor, right? It's like uh, it's a more fair, you know, fight the for you and a goblin. Um because, like, if you think about a RuneScape goblin, five feet tall with, like, a weird arched back, dude, I'm, I'm like, tripping them sons of bitches. I'm pulling on those ears. I'm, like, yeah. bam, kicking with the ears pulled back. Like, <laughs> I uh, even just, like, pull the nose down and, like, bop pull the, the top down. of the head. I think yeah. you're, you're immobilizing goblins like a cartoon. I yeah. get at least, at least 100. With hmm. clothes on my back. I'm not even wearing shoes right now. I think oh, I'm not even we're, shoes either. We're taking them down. Yeah, I think you and I we serve a pretty good, pretty good shot. You and <laughs> I together, though. Goblin. How long? Four hours? Uh, Is that, do we double our odds, or are we going like five hours? I still say because one of us could be doing it, like doing the killing and the mobilizing, and another of us could take a break, and we could swap back and forth, or we could just have you know fifty seconds every minute because we've immobilized it in in five to ten seconds working together. I feel like we could go, we could, we could fight goblins for a long time. You and I probably, if we add a saber, like a, a sword of some sort, like we're, we're infinite. As long as we have food and water, we don't have to sleep. I could, you and I could kill goblins forever. I need, if they I came need one at a minute. If I could bring minute. three items to fight goblins in like an endless gauntlet until I just pass out of exhaustion. Um, I would want, a, a saber blade i would want an essentially infinite source of water and i would want my inhaler uh those are the three items i think i would need to go for just ever against a group that. of goblins you know yeah, i respect that i think i could i could pull that off i think we could do that that'd be fun great fun question oxy thank you it's a ridiculous fun question it's it's That's the most wonderful. like weird fun <laughs> question i could think of but here we are Listen, folks, we need your fun questions. For this section to survive, we need to have more fun via your questions. So that means three things. You could either send them through the mail to our P.O. box, which I check on a semi-regular basis. I went there the other day. Nothing. Nothing's in the P.O. box. And I actually found the clips to hang up more postcards. So like, if you guys send postcards, I found a way to hang them up. And I will hang them up. You'll see them forever in the background. Um, postcards are one way to do it. Post uh, the addresses in the description. Um, you can email us a fun question, or you can DM us either on Discord in the, I guess you could actually DM us, um, which you may, it may be hard because like all my DMs from people I don't know go into like the message requests folder I would, and I, I don't always at, check it. At me in Discord. Do not DM me because there's a 90% chance I just don't see it. Right. So either add us in the XPBase channel if you're not a patron or if you're a patron, use the fun questions channel. We, uh, we love using that channel. 
um, or you can DM us on social media. That works too. But yeah, we love to hear your fun questions. We like, you guys have such a creative, there's so many creative people that we've gotten the most creative fun questions we've ever done from the community. So if you're still listening and you think of something wacky, send it to us. We'll answer the question. Or if it's not wacky and you just genuinely want to know, send us that question as well. We can have a discussion. I think that's going to do it for this episode, folks. Thank you so much for listening. Um, happy New Year to everyone. Happy leagues. Happy New Year's resolutions. Um, if, you're in, if you're in Texas, apparently it's going to be a cold one these coming weeks. So get your firewood stocked. We may lose power. My wife and I bought a generator, like a, an electric generator. And so we're not going anywhere. Um, anyway. Follow us on social media. Um, we don't have a Facebook, so don't even look there. Instagram, TikTok. We don't post as many TikToks. I wish that Oxy and I lived in the same state much, you know, if we didn't even live in the same, like if we just lived closer, we could do one of those fun TikToks where two people are walking down the road and we could be like, we're podcast hosts. We're going to do this. We could make one of those TikToks. It'd be fun. I love the, I love the unhinged ones. Yeah. We're podcast hosts. We're going to talk longer than we need to. Hi, my name is Matt, and I don't think I get enough physical contact. And you're like, no, you're supposed to say it like we're podcast hosts. <laughs> yes, yes. We like those are my. I love those. Those make me laugh so hard. Yeah, we could do that. Maybe we'll do one next time we're together. Anyway, follow us on social media. Um, join the Discord. We have merch. xpwaste.shop. Hopefully. You've seen our shop and you know that our merch is awesome. I need to switch it over from Christmas back to the normal shop. So thanks for that reminder, Michael. Um, and that's going to do it, folks. Thank you so much if you've made it this far in the episode. Comment with your favorite type of vegetable for the person who wants to eat more veggies this year and how to prepare them. Just so I can know you got to this point in the episode. Ah, happy New Year. Bye.